Is it time for you to replace your roof? The goal, we reset, and TJ Santeda has it for the Vikings. Santeda brings it right past two defenders. Look at the speed in the open eye. Santeda, great stick handling, great shot. Here's Carlotti, oh! in the end zone, it is caught. Charge, look for the pass, here's a shot, right in front, score! And that is a base hit. The run will score, and freshman pull check. Gets the strike. Anthony Grosso is going to make sure that the Wolfpack fans go home happy. Grosso for three. He got it! The official today contest. Here are free with the Frank Amito. The Ohio Team Motor. The headlines are the Robert Cooper, the Ryan Jump, the Judge, the Jim Gerardi, the Tigers, the Blue Boys, all of them. Slot and Travis Snyder in the backfield. Clark and with his quick release will throw quick outs and passes to the slot man. Defensively, they will be in a 3 4, the best way to defend against high points wing T. Peter. I'll turn it over to you in a minute, but right now, let's go to kickoff, and then I want your input about the Rangers. And number two, Joseph Kubrin, kicks it off, and it's fielded at the 20 on the 25. So, Peter, welcome back, buddy. Good to see you, man. Well, good to see you. We haven't done a game since that great Morristown beer, J.P. Stevens game. Good to be here in Waco Valley. For the Rangers, I think... You look at defensively, they've got a, a couple of guys when you, you talk about on that defensive side of the ball, guys like Adams Borney, the defensive lineman, I think they want to stuff the run here. This is a high point team that had quite a lot going for it when it comes to rushing. Mason Miracle was great against Jefferson last week. They'll look to go for it to him again. So quick dive off the right side. And we're gonna see uh, the Delaware wing tee. And I, you know what I love about that? Not only is that a traditional offense, but it's on grass. So it, it takes, takes me back at least memories <laughs> back in the day before turf. And most teams today, you know, we're running the, the spread, but uh, it's great. 
I'm, I'm glad to be here. Second down and six ball spotted on the 29 of High Point. Well, the Wildcats had two rushing touchdowns last week, and they rely on their steady offensive line. But remember, their quarterback's also a physical specimen. He can run, talking about, of course, John Elko. John Elko, we got, there's the motion from Cade Mattress, another captain. And the ball right there on the right side, handed off to number 26, Dylan Masters. And he gets enough for a first yard. He did. For a first down. Absolutely. That was great running, turning the legs. And then he got tripped up at that final second. And you're going to be a player to watch for the Rangers is Luke Riley, the senior linebacker. 5'9", 5'9", 170. And their defense was one of the reasons later in that game against Sussex Tech, they were able to make stops, a comeback win for them. And, you know, they want to go two and one, but this is an important game for both of these football teams. So first and 10 on the first drive of the game. And it looks like a little bit mi miscommunication on that play as Elko takes it himself, but he does get about four yards on the play. Not bad for a broken play. Well, when you look at it in that way, I believe America was there and he was supposed to be the one taking that handoff. But, you know, you can't complain. You have to take positive yards. And they're starting to drive a little bit. For the Rangers, I think you need the linebackers to uh, push in interiorly. You have to get them to kind of jab up the line, jam up the line. But at that same time, you know, you got to be wary because Elko can throw this ball. So Gage Bark is the center for this afternoon's game, and the ball is a qu quick dive and enough for the first down. Well, what have you noticed, Danny? They don't lose yards. They have a couple of really good running backs their miracles we were speaking on in the open. He had 136 yards, 18 attempts, and also two touchdowns. Guzman, Elko had a couple of rushes, so they they can put anyone under that center and just run up the middle and get positive yardage. So first and 10, there's the motion, and he stops under the left guard. And once again, same play, and he barrels his way for nine yards. They're taking 10 guys to try to take him down. So now again, that's uh, Mason Merkel, who we, you know, talking about. He's a, let's see, he's a senior, six, six foot, 200 pounds. So that, that's a lot of meat to try to take down. It's a lot. It's a smaller team for Walco Valley. They graduated a lot of seniors last year. They had a fantastic team and uh, last year's game in a high point a 27 nothing win by the rangers they're going to try to replicate that uh, you were talking about men in motion that that was ty woods their their uh their wide receiver and he's going to be looked in that spot a lot on this offense danny so second and short wall kill comes into a six-man front and uh, once again quick dived on the left side and that's enough for a first down. So that's their third first down on this drive. Very impressive. Great job by the big men up front. You're seeing a lot more than usual. We're so used to the spread offense, but we're seeing a lot more with a couple of the teams that we have seen on Morris Sussex Sports, this being one of them, that really can utilize direct snaps and not get immediately stuffed. It's not a nothing play. They will work the direct snap and get positive yardage out of it. First and 10, ball spotted on the 38 inside Wallkill Valley territory. And then there's the handoff to number 26, Dylan Masters. And a great job by stringing him outside by the Wallkill defense. So yeah. he loses a yard. So going back to what you said a couple plays ago, that's the first time they lost a yard. So second down and 11 ball spotted on the 39. And well, Dylan, that's the. Yeah, the, Dylan Masters was a guy that was utilized quite often in the rushing game for, for high points. Second and 11. And there's the motion, but again, a quick dive to the big man, and he gains about seven yards. Well, Danny, it's third year here. 
the head coach for High Point, Austin Caldwell, he really has a preface of running and being physical. There's a point for this High Point team being a physical team and winning battles on every play. And they've been doing that. And I think the coaching staff, although early on in this game, should be proud. And the Wildcats lost last week to Jefferson in a close one, 18 to 14. So third down and about four. Same formation, there is the motion. And again, he goes across the field and it's taken by the quarterback, John Elko. And Elko gets enough for a first down. Ball spotted right about the 24 yard line. 6-13 as the clock stops for them to move the chain, but it'll start immediately on referee Frank Amio's whistle. So first down and 10, ball spotted on the 20, looks like 24 yard line. Well, Denny Elko had a design run there. He had two attempts to run against the Falcons last week. Lost nine yards, but he's been good today. And the ball this time is handed to the motion to number 20, Ty Woods. And Ty Woods, let's see, gains nine yards. Second down and one. Once again, ball spotted on the 15. They have a very interesting play dynamic, does High Point, where they will put in a play, it may work or it may not work, and then they'll kind of rest it out for a couple of plays and then bring it back to see if the Rangers are responding well defensively. They've, they've lost it. That's the second time, Danny, they've used that wide receiver in motion. Yeah, and I talked to Austin Codwell before the game, and he likes these, you know, he's he has no issues with the three, four yards, obviously, oh, per carry. And there you go. Elko takes it behind a great block by Mason Merkel. So not only is Merkel running the ball, he's also doing his job in the backfield as a block, and that's another first down. I, I think that's the fifth first down, if I'm not mistaken. Starting to lose track here. But they're on the 11-yard line with four under five minutes to go here on the first drive. Thank you for joining us live on the Mars Sussex Sports Network. I'm Danny Weiss, your play-by-play -play announcer alongside color commentator Peter Fivefoot. First he, down. Yeah, he almost ran over Jake Van Ewen. That's a physical guy. And there's the handoff once again to number 14, Mason Merkel. And he's tripped up immediately by Joseph Kubrin, the sophomore. And that's a second down and eight. Ball spotted on the eight yard line. I've noticed that the Rangers are going low on tackles, which, you know, a guy can bounce off you if you're going high, but that also enables you to kind of run for a couple of yards. And it's just been uh, that one negative yard rush, but it's just been positive yardage after just moving it. And these are the drives that help a team's confidence, Danny, because the clock continues to crunch and you're just getting closer and closer to pay dirt. So second down and about eight. A lot of motion going on. And the ball is handed off to number 26, Dylan Masters. And Masters is just short of the first down. And it's third down and three. You know, I notice, it, you know, in this drive, there hasn't been a fourth down situation yet. So that shows you how the flow of this game and how the they're controlling the clock. They're controlling the football game here in the first quarter. Uh, remarkable coming up to three-minute mark. The only team that I know has amazing clock, con clock control is West Morris Wolfpack. So third down and short. And the quarterback will take it himself. And he gets in for the score. Well, a running scamper touchdown to the outside. And that was number 15, Jaron Martris, actually, who took that in for the score. Yeah, the backup quarterback, they went Jaron Martris going to the outside. And uh, relative to the team, Cade Martris, the reason that happened, they had a tight end in motion to help block to the outside. Well, Austin Caldwell told me before the game he's possibly going to go to a dual, to a dual um quarterback and right there it showed 
number 30 set the kick and that's Jacob Woods and he's in for the score so 255 remaining here in the first quarter on the first drive and the visiting Chester, New Jersey, a call. So they let's talk about the Wildcats real quick. Like I mentioned, under third year Austin uh, Cardwell, they beat Jefferson last week. They have the wing tee. We've already seen John Elko. He's not throwing. I don't think we've seen a pass. Uh, one second, uh, lost to Jefferson last week. That's, I'm sorry. Right. <laughs> that's okay. Uh, but, and Walker, and, and, and as you were saying, right, they, they had, they have, but they have a good team. Yeah. Like, a lot of people are like, well, you know, they lost to the Jefferson Falcons. It's done. No, no. They have a really good team, and they could run They could run the table. They have a tough schedule, but I think they really like what their head coach brings to them, and I think yeah. they're a very motivated offense. Right, and, you, you know, Miracle, he rushed for 136 yards last, last week, but High Point did struggle in the red zone. Um, so, and, and they didn't score, and I think that was, that was a couple times. But, you know, the Wildcats... They do have seven returning starters on offense and defense, so there's a lot of experience out there. And last year, like we talked about, they lost to high point, 27 nothing. And here's the kickoff, and it's fielded by number 11, Jaden McNeil, and he breaks it, and he gets outside the 40 to the 41. So 247 remaining, and we're going to get our first look at Walt Kill Valley's offense. Well, Jaden McNeil took it up, and now it's the first time we've really heard this crowd roar here in Walt Kill Valley for the Rangers. Also, I want to kind of flip what you said. You said High Point have seven returning starters. They are very experienced. The Rangers, opposite of the spectrum. They had a great team last year, but the young team had kind of gone through some growing pains. Ridgewood, that was a tough a 3 o'clock Eastern start of the season, and then they get last week that really big comeback behind win so, for them against Sussex Tech. So we got two receivers on the near side and here on the first play number nine Zach Clarkin passes complete to number 11 Jaden McNeil. So Clarkin is only a junior. Well Clarkin is my player to watch for this game. He had three rushing touchdowns against Sussex Tech last week. He was able to kind of churn the yardage and three rushing touchdowns, as we said. But he also, as you saw there, has a great arm. And they'll have him next year in his senior year. He can really push this offense, Danny. So number three to Anthony Segroy is one of the wideouts. And the ball is handed off tackle. And no, he keeps on his feet. Look at that run. What a great job. By number zero, Nick Mendoza, the big senior, 5'9", 170 pounds. So first down into high point territory. What an impressive run that was. I love to see that. That's smash mouth football right there. Ball spotted on the 47. And Wolkill gets it under two minutes here in his quick first quarter. Four receivers, two on the far side, two on the near side. Quarterback in shotgun position. And here's the snap. And it looks like he was faked the option. And number nine takes it himself. Zach Clarkin takes those moves and brings it down to uh, about seven yards on the play. The best player on those two plays, we must give credit to the sophomore, Jack Carr, who was able to come across. There was a pin block on that run. He was able to keep the legs churning of his of his running back Nick Mendoza and on Clarkin's rush he made an, a great block and was able Clarkin was able to go outside Clarkin one of the most elusive running quarterbacks in North Jersey football so second down and four we got one receiver in uh, two receivers in the slot one on the near side one on the far side quarterback rolls out to the right and the pass is co completed to Connor Hobie the sophomore wide receiver. There is, flag on the play. there is a flag on the plate. An eligible receiver downfield from what the line judge has called. And let's see from Frank Amio. And I was correct. It's also a loss of down. Five yard penalty and a loss of down. So that brings him back five yards and it should be third down and nine if I'm correct. Well, one of the things that we've noticed and 
this is also because of the short yardage situations. Danny is that. For high point, their corners and their safeties have not motored back as much. They've kind of stayed close to that sideline around your 40 yard line. They haven't really backed up as far. So Clarkin is not a quarterback known for the deep threat, but if he wants to go there, that's open. Second down, my, my bad, no loss of down. Trips on the, on the far side. And there's the pass from McCracken. Clarkin complete to Segroy once again. See, Danny, that's what I'm saying. Like, the, see, the corner was just that out in the flat that was wide open. And if High Point's going to do that, then this young team, which has is very young, but I, I want to speak on this for Walco Valley. They have a large amount of wide receivers that are very quick and very elusive, and it's wide open. So that third, pass. third down, and number nine, Zach Clarkin takes it himself, and he gets enough for the first down. And that's going to be the end of the first quarter, live on the Morris Sussex YouTube network, where High Point has a six to nothing lead. We'll be right back after these messages. Top builders, Hadco will replace your roof the right way at a super fair price and usually get the job done by the time you come home from work. Call or text Tony to get a quote today at 973-818-8516 or visit them at hadcobuilders.com. I was born fast. Parisi made me faster. I thought I could jump. Parisi brought me to new heights. I wasn't always quick. Parisi made me lightning fast. Strength was never my strength. Parisi changed all that. Well, we're back here in Walk Hill Valley, the Rangers and the Wildcats. Uh, Rangers offense, Danny, has really been motorized, and I think that the guy driving the ship has yeah. been Zach Clarkin. Yeah, absolutely, um, it, it, and, and, a, and a great drive here. First down and 10. As we resume action, first and 10, Walk Hill Valley at the high point, 35. They got another receiver in motion. And then Clarkin takes it. He feels the pressure, gets outside the pocket, throws on the run to Nick Mendoza. And Mendoza gets out of bounds. And he is at about the 14-yard line. I can't just stop talking about these wide receivers. Their routes are really impressive. That was a very improvised play. And Clarkin is such a weapon when he gets outside of the pocket. Yeah, so first down and 10. And this drive continues. Great job by Clarkin on the run to escape the defender. We got trips here on the near side. And the ball is quickly handed off to Gabe Yu. And he picks up a yard, or just about loses a half a yard. So second down, 11 ball on the 15, 11, six remaining here in the first half. Well, getting there as getting there as well as we were talking about was uh, Gabe Mattress again. Their, their defensive line starting to step up a little bit for High Point. So second down and 11, again, trips. And there's a smash screen, and it's incomplete to Jaden to Jada McNeil. Well, that went off McNeil's hands. That happens a couple times. We would like to say, though, uh, Danny, real quickly, that it is interesting. We see a lot of afternoon games where, or early afternoon games, where the sun's an issue. Not really an issue here. It's a little cloudy here in Walco Valley, but... Uh, yeah, that's, that, that happens. You drop a pass or two. Yeah, it's 75 degrees perfect. I mean, I have no issues here with clouds today as long as the rain holds off. So third down and 11. McNeil, the receiver here on the near side. We got trips to the right. And there's the pass. And it is caught. What a remarkable caught catch by Jaden McNeil. If we can go to the replay on that. And see how that all formed. 
well, absolutely. They have the wide receivers going out wide and McNeil's on the left. It's a one-on-one, -on -one, like a rebound type play in basketball. So he steps up, right? Look at the right. Now throws over to the left. It's a jump ball. McNeil makes the catch and nothing defensively that Dylan Masters could do. And just like that, now Walker Valley has a chance to take the lead. And they do under Joseph Kubrin, the sophomore. So 10.34 remaining here till halftime. Walkill Valley answers against High Point. It's seven to six at, you know, talk about special teams so you know Peter there's three parts to a football game you have the offense the defense and the special teams and normally if you win two of the three you're going to win the football game so that extra point it, again it's early on but that extra point might haunt them down the road it's mammoth I did a game yesterday uh, Parsippany and uh, Whippany Park and Whippany Park took a touchdown late in that fourth quarter uh, they took the lead extra point was blocked and then Parsippany went down the field, scored, hit their extra point, and ended up winning the game. So it's absolutely important. And that happened all in the fourth quarter. But still, what if you get to this game? It's a low-scoring defensive battle. That's not what it looks like. But let's say that is what it becomes, Danny. And 7-6, to six, and now, you know, a turnover fourth down, and the Rangers win because they were able to hit their extra point, and high point wasn't. And now you're down... Now you're 0-2 in your season. Yeah, that could be a really big special teams occurrence. And Kubrin set the kick from right to left. Just waiting for Frank Gamio's whistle, and we're underway here. And the ball is kicked short. And it was fielded by Dylan Masters. And that's good field position to start out. You know, not a deep kick. And look, you know, from the first drive, you don't want to give them a lot of field, right? No, I don't think you want to give them a lot of field. You want to try to pin high point. Um, but we've also seen high point can just drive this ball. So for the Rangers, I think you have to risk the pass. High point has not shown you at all that they're willing to throw this ball. You, I think right now it's like, oh, we can pressure the run. What if they complete a pass? Well, they haven't completed a pass no, all, all afternoon or morning, whatever you want to call hey, it. listen, if it's not broken, nothing to fix, and the run game is absolutely phenomenal today. So there's the shift in the offense, and the ball is handed to Merkel, the captain, number 14, and, and he gains about two yards, gets it over to the 40. So, Well, a running game takes the pressure off the offense and it enables them to pass, but it puts pressure on the running game and on the offensive line. So as good as this rushing attack is, watch out, you know, if there's a bad step or if there's a misread, you could also be looking at, a, you know, one of the Rangers might be trying to knock the ball out. That could be disastrous for High Point. Yeah, and Cody DiCarlo is the center for today. And on the right side is Matt Lunger, quarterback and shotgun, and he will take it himself. So that's... And he breaks it to the right, breaks it all the way to the sideline. Great run by John Elko. So what could have been, looked like a, you know, he was going to be down. Almost immediately, he breaks it out. Matt Lunger and Donnie Weiss come out with some great blocks on that outside, which enabled their quarterback to break a couple tackles. And now you are in plus territory. You're on the Rangers' side of the field. And as you saw on the replay, Martris is the quarterback. Hands it to number 22, Eli Nozel. And, you know, no it seems like no, no matter who's running the football, great job. And, and you know, you, you got to owe a lot of credit to this offensive line. So first down and 10, ball spotted on the 24 of Walk Hill Valley. And, yeah, Donald Weiss doing a great job there on the left side, no relation. And the ball handed off to Junior Guzman, the captain. And now with the Guzman. And Guzman gets to the 
Looks like the 18-yard line. So we're, you know, Peter, we're, we're seeing a lot of different personnel coming in and out of the game. And you know, in this early on, you 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 usually don't see it, especially on that first drive, right? I always say, if it's not broken, why fix it? But you know, coach knows best. Well, so instead of the passing game, Denny, they're also utilizing the double quarterback tandem. That's really tripping up Walco Valley. Absolutely, Merkel in the backfield. Two setbacks now, and the ball is handed to Miracle. And he gains, uh, it looks like, no, he's just gonna be short of the first down. So third down, and it looks like a, a, a good yard from there. Ball spotted on the 15. They've used, yeah, outside zone, inside zone, quarterback sweeps, quarterback takeouts. They've done everything but throw the ball, but they've been getting the yardage, and I think what's really Busting Walkle is Walkle's offense. We've seen they want to they want to go, they want to run. But here's the thing that High Point's exploiting: Walkle hasn't had a lot of time to even get on the field. They're just crunching this clock. Third down and short, and the quarterback we figured was going to take it himself, but a great, great job by number ten, Ethan Alfonso, to make the tackle. But that's going to be enough for a first down. Yeah, this is the thing. They're finding ways. They're getting positive yardage. They got that ball from their 40. Now they're about to the 25 to the 20 now into the red zone. And it just past the 20. You're just driving, driving, driving. And Denny, that clock continues to move. Right now it's about 7, 10 and change in the first half. They they know how dangerous this offense, Walco Valley, is. They want to keep them on off the field and just crunch right. the numbers and crunch in. Brendan Percy, the wide out. There's the snap and the handoff. And he's immediately stopped. Miracle. So he actually gets a loss on the play. Great job by the defense on that to lose about a yard. Well, Merkel has gotten a couple of great opportunities, but this Walco Valley defense has been on task when it comes to Merkel, but the issue is they've been running outside with a couple of their other running backs. Elko's ran for it. it it's, it's been really great offense for yeah. High Point. Elko under center. And look like, uh, yeah, a quick fake. And the ball is overthrown to uh, Dylan Masters. So that brings up brings up a third down, third and about 12 to go. So I, this is, uh, you know, for on their second drive, this is the longest they've needed for a first down on third down. So Well, yeah, Elko, that's his first pass. He only threw for 21 yards in their game against Jefferson last week. On that, yeah, that was a short pass, and that kind of caught Walker off guard, though. Right, so they break the huddle, and, you know, it's handed off and doing what they do best, and Masters takes it, and he gains some healthy yardage to bring it to fourth down. Uh, getting a little bit out of the hole. It'll be fourth down and five. With what so, happened with the kicker, Danny, I think this is fourth down territory. Yeah, fourth down territory. But let's see. Nope, they're, they're going to go for it. They've been successful at what they're doing. Elko comes in the game, calls the calls made from the sideline. And it is not that far-fetched to see if you can draw them off either. So... Brendan Percy is the receiver on the far side, shotgun, and Elko takes it himself, and he does not, he does not get the first down. So great job once again by Walkill Valley on this drive. They were bending, bending, but they never broke. And now Walkill Valley takes over. Great job by that defense. Well, they are getting the ball to start the second half, but because it plays into the hands to methodically push through, and this is a very stout defense, I think if you're Walker, you gotta do what you do best, they gotta really open it up and 
try to get these corners, you know, discombobulated. And defensively for high point, Danny, they got to get after Clark and they got to find a way to get after the quarterback. Yeah, and this line's doing a great job too as uh, Jack Carr, the big sophomore, 6'2", 190. It's a great job by him as well. Got to give a lot of kudos to the offensive line. Two receivers on the far side, one in the slot. And there's the pass once again to number 11, Jaden McNeil. And McNeil gets enough for a first down. Well, good route run by Jaden McNeil. He twists right through the defense of Dylan Masters, who's been beaten by a couple of these key passes. And right there over the middle, and then that's Walkill moving the chains. So first down and 10, ball spotted on the 19, under five minutes here remaining in this fast-paced, grinded-out football game. Three receivers on the far side, and the ball is quickly handed off to number 20, Gabe Oy, the senior running back. And he gets about six yards, six, seven yards, second down ball spotted on about the 26 yard line. 25 actually. So we're seeing the same formations. Trips on the far side and the quarterback takes it himself. He sees a lane, he gets to the 30, to the 35 down to the 40. And there's a flag. That's going to be Zach Clark, and what a great job. And that's going to be a, a bad penalty on high point. As the quarterback is making an attempt to the sideline, you can't touch him. Well, you can't touch him, so that, that's one of obviously one of the reasons that's a bad penalty. Coach Caldwell's not going to like that. But let me talk a little bit about that block by Jaden McNeil. And it's so interesting when you talk about sideline runs. We're so enamored with the NFL has become an all football with offense. Sometimes we just, oh, that's a good block. We don't really look at it. Some of these blocks, especially the Waco Valley offensive linemen have thrown out, have been so impressive and they've opened up the offense. So first down and 10 ball inside high point territory. Trips on the far side. Clarkin under center. And the ball is completed to number 11, Jaden McNeil. What a phenomenal catch. What Great. concentrate, fantastic concentration. Great throw down low as you just take a quick look at the replay. They had trips on the right and then just that throw just careens its way. It's a bullet right under the middle and into the bread basket. And right now they are continuing to march. And I'll just say one quick thing, Danny. This team, when they grow up, when these guys become seniors, this team's going to be really good, this Walkill team. So High Point calls a time timeout. And it looks like they're going to try to settle down. Let's go to a 30-second commercial. We'll be right back. George J. Keller and Sons want your house to be the kind of home for all to see. Best roofing, windows, siding too. Great solar and gutters, we're here for you. Our season pros are unsurpassed, so give a call, we'll take your task. Transform your home, that's what we do. So give a call, we're here for you. For roofing, siding, windows and solar, we do it all for you. George J. Keller and Sons. Your family owned operation since 1980. Call for your free estimate. Welcome back to High Point, 334 remaining till halftime. The Rangers have a 7-6 lead over High Point. And the ball is handed off to number 20, Gabe. Well, good push through power there, Gabe. Boy, yeah, yeah, and the offensive line continuing to churn. I, I guess if you're high point, you just got to, you know, try to push the line through. Now they are the ones, Waco Valley, that are continuing to drive the ball, Danny. Yes, 
Absolutely. Had tides have turned since that first drive. Second down and eight. Trips on the far side. One receiver down here and in the near side. Quarterback rolls out. Looks left. Looks right. Rolls to our left. Sees a little bit of daylight. Great job by Clarkin. So that, that's what makes a quarterback great is the fact that he sees, he doesn't have open and finds an, finds an alley to just get out of it and get himself to a safe spot. That's really good coaching too, understanding that if it's a busted play, it's never busted until the play's over because it was really brief, but he kind of fell down on his own a little bit untouched. Then he just got back up, was able to scramble and get positive yards. So Clarkin brings the team out, third down and three. Trips on the far side. You, the lone setback, and the ball is faked, and Clarkin takes it himself, pushes his way to the five-yard line. So, so it looks like it's... First and goal. First and goal ball spotted on the five. This opens up a lot for you because of the dynamics of this offense. You can rotate your quarterback out. You can give it. You can give it to you to Gayboy. You and you can also rotor some wide receivers out there for some jump balls. McNeil will probably be utilized, although he is not on the field right now. So Ois, uh, the lone setback, and once again, a pass, but there's a penalty. And that's in the vicinity of either defensive holding or offensive holding. Let's see, I'm, I'm not gonna make an, any type of an assumption, but let's see, it's holding on the offense. So that'll bring it back 10 yards. Great play, but it is negated by the holding penalty. Yeah, my apologies, Neil was there, and that vantage point is on the left. And that's kind of what they went for, but not a jump ball. This time they're trying to piece it right together. But the defense went right for it. Uh, good read by the Wildcats, and then they get the beneficiary of a, bat of a holding call against them. So first down in 15, and Adams and Borney having a great game. I just think the holding penalty was on him. You could tell by his body language. So Clarkin under shotgun, plenty of protection, throws the ball into the middle, tended for McNeil, and it's an incomplete. So third, brings up a third down, 2.06 remaining here till halftime. Thanks for joining us this morning. I'm Danny Weiss, your play-by-play -play announcer. Morris Sussex Sports here on the YouTube network. Joined by Peter Fivefoot, color commentator for this Morning, afternoon. Well, they got to try some sort of short pass here to kind of open it up conservatively. So trips on the far side. And almost like, I don't know, like a, a downgraded Statue of Liberty type of a play where he just tucks the ball under Snyder. And Snyder, the sophomore, does not get much. So it's third down and goal to go, but a long goal to go on the 15-yard line. Zach Clark in. One of the interesting things, Danny, that we've noticed by both these teams is neither of them really utilize screens, but they tried the hot pass and then the shovel, and, you know, Wildcats are eating it up. They're really going well defensively. Right, a passing situation, and just Zach Clark in back. Gets a little bit of protection, takes it himself, throws off his back foot, and the ball is dropped in and out of the hands of Jada McNeil. That is the third time they have gone to McNeil. So there's a official timeout on the play. So it brings up a fourth down and goal. And 115 remaining. So you know, look, let's talk about what we've seen so far. So High Point comes out, drives almost the entire first quarter and gets in with a touchdown. But ever since then, it's been all Wallkill Valley. Well, the Rangers have started their second drive, which was a more dynamic drive as McNeil is up and looks good. Then, you know, High Point 
tried to drive the length of the field after you know missing extra points or trying to take the lead again. And that kind of gets got stuffed. And Walkle started to kind of be more dynamic and then decided, hey, we can move some of this clock. We can do what iPoint's doing and then decided to drive it. And also, I think it's important for a young team specifically, Danny, to learn how to methodically drive the ball too because if you're just, you know, you're going fast pace, fast pace all the time, you'll run into a tough team where you can't do that and then you'll have some problems. So fourth down and goal, but again ball on the 15 I, I would say it's definitely a passing situation trips on the far side one receiver here on the near side and there's a, a timeout coach Bobby Leach calls a timeout didn't like what he saw so that is a timeout with 115 here remaining so look in interesting yeah, obviously you're not kicking a field goal it's you know too far to one. We really haven't seen anybody break a run. I don't. I think your only option is to pass it into the end zone. Well, honestly, I think you should test your kicker. I think you should try to kick it. I understand the wind is whipping. I I, I get that, but this is actually one of the campuses in the high schools in North Jersey, especially this area in Sussex County. There's wind all the time, so a lot of these kickers are used to it. Um, I, I don't. You, you have gotten a couple passes off, but they've gone to McNeil a couple times and he's not been able to catch it. So we'll see what they're going for here, but well, this is going to be a test for both teams. Yeah, that definitely. And, you know, you talk about the win. The flag's not moving. So maybe we're not getting the win, you know, that possibly could uh, up here. But another point. So uh, there's a flag on a play, and that's going to be an illegal substitution. Either that or a delay a game. But another point, Danny, if they do, after this, decide to go for it, I would say is maybe the idea of going for it and you do score that touchdown if you really like your play, although they're backing them up way back now, uh, past the 30, is maybe you your team, Leach, is trying to get some real confidence and trying to shatter the confidence of high point. That might be a mental game. That might be what they're playing. So it was a unsportsmanlike conduct penalty on Walkill Valley. I'm not sure where it came from, but that brings them back to the 30. So fourth down and goal to go on the 30. And let's see what Coach Leach has in store for Zach Clarkin. This is interesting, Danny, because now the wind is starting to roar a little more, and now you are kind of getting a little closer to out of your kicker's range. This is well, going to be a really interesting. Yeah, that, that's college level right there. Um, that would be a fifth, about a 50, a 48 yard attempt. So we're not going to see that. And Clarkin back to pass, looks right. Takes left, going to take it himself, and a great defensive play by number 15, Jaron Martris. So great job, and, you know, costly mistakes by, by Walkill Valley possibly cost them six points. So 108 remaining here till halftime, and it's a first down for High Point. And let's see what High Point has up their sleeves, Coach Cardwell, and uh, let's see if they're going to go to a passing game. They have... Many yards to go to get at six points. Well, my quick thing is that, you know, they got the momentum now. They're only down by one, and they got a lot of timeouts to use, and they've been able to really move this ball. Yeah, they're in run, and sure enough, it is to Miracle, and Markle gets second yard, and Coach wants uh, them uh, I, I thought he was, I'm watching him, and I thought he was signaling to just line up. But they a short huddle, second down and two, ball spotted. Second down and three, ball spotted on the 40. And there's a handoff again to Merkel, and he just bullies his way, bullies his way to the 48-yard line. And the clock will stop as they move the chains. Ball still spotted inside of high point territory. Well, I think that Walker Valley was trying to defeat some momentum with that fourth down play. Now, now the momentum is with high point a little bit now. Yeah, so here's the handoff to, to Masters, and Masters just gets over midfield. So 
There's a timeout on the field. High point, 20 sec, 20.6. Look, I, you know, again, if the run game works, you stick with it. Um, I could sit here and, and, and try to dissect this game. I, I would just feel that you want to go downfield. And, and, if, and if your kicker could make it, at least try to get in field goal position. Second down and five. Also, they're not receiving the ball in the second half. The Rangers are. So, yeah, I think maybe one or two couple throws. There's only 20 seconds to go. But, again, the momentum really with high point. And now you're thinking, hey, we could drive the ball. We, we got it now. We just made a great defensive stop. You know, they had their fourth down stop. We've got our fourth down stop. If you're a high point alum or supporter, and now, I don't know, maybe, right, get this in the field goal range, get some momentum going to the locker room. We don't really feel like we're completely out of it. We like our chances, and they have not been able to stop the run. 100%. So second down, one receiver on the far side. We got one in the slot. And <laughs> Coach Bobby Leach will call a timeout. That's their second and a half. They have one left. Now, I assume that's that he doesn't like his defensive formation. Right. They, they got, now, the deal here is you actually could go for a run. That's got to go to the sideline. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, 20 seconds is not, is not really a lot. Um, you know, if you're somebody like Tom Brady, then 20 seconds is like three years to the defenders. So, um, here in high school, it's, uh, you know, look, there's a lot of quarterbacks out there that could throw 40, 50 yard passes, but we haven't seen that yet here with High Point. And the run game's been working. So, you know, let's see, uh, let's see what's going to happen here. And it's important on the defense, Danny, to know to put it in the middle of the field. I was doing that game yesterday. Uh, Whippity Park was staying alive because there were some defensive miscues where. The ball was going out to the sideline, and it should have stayed in, in the middle of the field to crunch that clock. Slade Muller, the receiver, and the ball is handed off to Merkel, and he gets enough for the first down. And ball on the 37-yard line uh, for a first down. So there's another timeout by High Point. Well, that's their final, so every run for the next 15 seconds or so cannot go into the middle of the field. Just can't because they have no way of stopping the clock. And if you're Walker, as I was trying to preface, you've got to force the ball into the middle of the field. Right. And, and let them go down. Oh, let the clock. They can't stop the clock. We can. Well, I have to imagine Coach is probably calling about two or three plays right now in the huddle or uh, make, you know, that's if the the back or the receiver or the quarterback does not get out of bounds. Critical right here at 15 seconds in regards to at least, again, getting into field goal position or getting the ball in the end zone. Ball spotted on the 37 and first and 10 as High Point breaks the huddle from the sideline. Yeah, 15 seconds. You could throw a quick out to the sideline and then work from there. Yes. And Cade Martris is tight end and there's the ball lofted and it's it's intercepted but it's out of bounds so second down in 10 you know that that really was a great call the problem was it's just uh you know it was too far for the receiver but if he got that in you got yourself a whole different type of play calling at that point nine seconds 9.5 exactly on the Walk Hill Valley Rangers scoreboard. Well, so that ball kind of take a, took a loop. It was kind of just rolling in the air, just hanging there, hanging there. And sometimes those are tough passes to execute. There's the motion and Elko takes it himself, rolls out to the left and does a great job getting out of bounds with three seconds remaining. So third down, and actually, the, the down doesn't matter. It's really the three seconds that's going to make a difference because you're not going to go two play. You're not going to get two plays. Well, they're on the Ranger 28. So I don't know 
if they feel like they're in their well, kicker's reach. Well, they're going well, for it here. No, no, no. It looks they're like going a, for the kick. Yeah, yeah, they're going for the kick. Right, yes. right. They're, they're going for the kick, so they're in range for that. At, that's what he feels. Jacob Woods, and that's a that's going to be a 45-yard attempt. And you're right, the wind did pick up, and it is going towards his back. Uh, and it's, uh, it's going to be short. And that's going to take us to halftime. Well, live on the Morris Sussex Sports Network, I'm Danny Weiss alongside Peter Fivefoot, where the Rangers have a 7-6 to six lead over the Wildcats. Well, that's a tough kick, too, even if the wind isn't picking up, as you said, being high school. Th that's a tough yep. kick. And we're going to go to halftime. We'll be right back in a few moments after the halftime festivities. Thank you for joining us here on the live on the Morris Sussex YouTube network. Pasquale Brothers, we love creating great food for our customers. Everything is made daily using real fresh ingredients and you can taste the difference. We specialize in creating gluten-free options for our customers, all prepared in a separate area so there's no cross-contamination. We also pride ourselves on providing unparalleled catering for events big and small. We love what we do. Stop into Pasquale Brothers, you'll taste the difference. Maximum Health Physical Therapy is an individually owned practice with offices in Bud Lake and Long Valley, New Jersey. Our licensed therapists use hands-on manual therapy and are actively involved in our patients' progress. We use a collaborative team approach which benefits our patients and we accept most insurance plans, including Medicare. We offer ARPWAVE Neurotherapy, which accelerates healing 10 times faster, drastically decreases chronic pain, is FDA approved, and is covered by most insurance companies. Please visit us at Max MaximumHealthPT.com and regain the life you love. Do your glory days as a high school athlete feel far behind you? Are memories of being out there competing so clear that you can feel it? But then reality sets in and your stiff back, achy knees, and painful shoulders remind you that it's been years or even decades since you can move that way. Don't worry, the team at Better With Physical Therapies one-on-one -on -one customized care can help you feel and move better again. Their specialists will find the cause of what's slowing you down and build a plan that will help you realize that your glory days are still ahead of you. you can can get better with Better With Physical Therapy located in the Madison YMCA. Request an appointment today at betterwithpt.com. Sussex Meatpacking in Wharton, New Jersey is a family owned and operated business specializing in USDA prime and choice meats, pork, poultry, lamb, veal, and many other store-made specialty items. They also have a fantastic deli, a wonderful market with all the freshest fruits, veggies, and pre-made meals, and they can cater any event, including your family holiday dinners, more delicious than you can on your own. Visit them at sussexmeat.com. I actually used to be deathly afraid of public speaking. I intentionally became an adjunct professor teaching tax, and I also became a Zoom instructor as a way of overcoming this fear of mine. They're both forms of leading and teaching in their own right. Bottom line though, WIS supports my passions. I truly believe that WIS wants me to be the best version of myself, and it's such an amazing feeling that I truly have the freedom to do that here. At Planet Networks, our high-speed fiber is designed to be fast. Up to 300 times faster than cable, and up to 500 times faster than DSL. As fast as 10,000 megabits per second up and down, if you speak nerd. We're talking cheetah, bullet train, lightning strike, hummingbird, race car kind of fast. Planet Networks. The Northern Rangers are being part of the show, Jersey Jukebox. Picking songs by famous producer artists, including My Chemical Romance, Whitney Houston, Frank Sinatra, and Bon Jovi. 
The walk up Riley marching range are in the direction of Mr. Jeff Colaruso and the assistant director, Mr. Tom Aroni. The drum majors are Lily Papotnik and Emily Covey. Please make some noise for your Wolfville Valley Marching Rangers!
Out of town, that's round of applause for your Wallfield Valley marching Rangers. So third down and short. And the quarterback will take it himself. And he gets in for the score. Well, up year, in his senior year, he can really push this offense, Danny. So number three to Anthony Segroy is one of the wideouts, and the ball is handed off tackle. And no, he keeps on his feet. Look at that run. What a great job by number this far. So Clarkin is not a quarterback known for the deep threat, but if he wants to go there, that's open. Second down, my, my bad, no loss of down. Trips on the, on the far side. And there's the pass McCracken. Clarkin complete to Segroy. Once feels the pressure, gets outside the pocket, throws on the run to Nick Mendoza. And Mendoza gets out of bounds. And he is at about the 14 yard line. I can't just stop talking about these wide receivers. They're routes. As long as the rain holds off. So third down and 11. McNeil, the receiver here on the near side. We got trips to the right. And there's the pass. And it is caught. What a remarkable caught catch by Jaden McNeil. If we can go to the replay. Cody DiCarlo is the center for today. And on the right side is Matt Munger. Quarterback and shotgun. And he will take it himself. So that's, and he breaks it to the right, breaks it all the way to the sideline. Great run by John Elko. So we're seeing the same formations. Trips on the far side, and the quarterback takes it himself. He sees a lane, he gets to the 30, to the 35, down to the 40. And there's a flag, that's gonna be. Trips on the far side. Clarkin under center. And the ball is completed to number 11, Jaden McNeil. What a phenomenal. The weight. Jen Basilino of the Kosher Real Estate Group, LLC, is a Morris County top real estate agent and New Jersey Circle of Excellence award winner year over year that takes the time and care to understand your real estate needs and concerns. She's extremely successful in representing clients in selling and purchasing a home, new construction, townhouses, million dollar homes, rentals, and even commercial properties. Call her today at 973-202-2103.
there for them. We're here for you. Get back the life you love. Ali. I'm Danny Weiss, your play-by-play -play announcer here on the Morris Sussex Sports Network, where Peter Wolkill Valley has a seven to six lead over High Point. And you know, just a small recap: if you're just joining us, High Point pretty much dominated the first quarter and got in for six points, missed the extra point, and then Wolkill Valley has taken much control uh, of the second quarter and have a seven to six lead. And it's a, gr it's a great game defensively on both sides. And I tell you, back and forth, both teams are accumulating a lot of uh, yards on offense, Peter. Yeah, because seven and six seems like it's a very defensive game. But both of these offenses have had their moments. Surging-wise, when it comes to the pass, has been in the favor of the Rangers. And we have not seen many teams in northern New Jersey rush the way that this high point team runs. They've been utilizing a couple of backs on a tandem, and uh, they've been getting it going for them. Yeah, so again, uh, I'm Danny Weiss, play-by-play -play announcer on the Morris Sussex YouTube network, and my partner today is Peter Fivefoot. Great job here today, Peter. Thank you. Uh, Jess Carfello at the controls along with Julia Gosden and Gerard James up top on the camera, and we're here. We're set to start the second quarter. Thump, sorry, the second half. And Anthony Segroy gets the kickoff and gets to the 32-yard line, first and 10. So Wolkill Valley starts the second half with the football. And let's see if, you know, we'll know right away if there's any adjustments going on. We'll see if there's any different formations, different personnel. But they got to get out and really pass the ball. I think get this high point defense off its rocker a little bit. So Clark in again takes control. We got tr starting out with trips on the far side. Uh, Jaden McNeil, receiver, and the pulling guards. And on the oil. Gabe, you. Well, they tried to pull Adam Zaborny and Jake Van Ewen. But defensively, High Point was all over that, swallowing the run, and just wanted to give you an update from uh, Whippany Park, where Hanover Park is playing Madison. It's 35 to 14 in favor of Hanover Park in that game. But in this game, pretty close one. That was just stuffed <laughs> by a really great defense yeah. for High Point. Right, and the defensive line, the linebackers did a great job of, you know, the guards and the tackles are going to take you to the play. So if they're pulling and let, but. <laughs> Normally, and this is a great play by Zach Clarkin. So, actually, to refute my comment, on a normal Delaware, when the pulling guards and the tackles pull to one side, that they're normally taking you to the play, um, especially a pulling guard. But on that play, the defense didn't read it correctly initially, but then came back in on, on the pursuit. So, quick read by the defense. We saw the pulls. And let's see what goes on here, third down and eight. He's had a couple of rolling out runs to that side, very good for for Walco Valley, for Clarkin. But another thing there was, I think also you gotta do credit, uh, it's a little thing, but Dylan Masters, he noticed the quarterback was going to the sideline, instead of trying to hit him like he did before, no penalty. Yep. So Clarkin in the shotgun, Nick Mendoza is in motion. Clarkin back to pass, feels the pressure, and he's sacked by number 72, Donald Weiss. So Weiss got there, Danny, and there must have been some talking with the coaching staff uh, at High Point as well as assistant coaches John Gardner and Nick Conklin because they are really, as that was the fourth down, it's a great stop for them. Now they have really gone after Clark and more than they have in this entire game. So fourth down and definitely a punt situation. First, uh, first punt we've seen all game. Clarkin is the punter. Clarkin also the punter, and a great snap and a quick kick, and it's short though to the right side. And the ball is going to be spotted inside Walkill Valley territory on the 42. This could be a turning point in favor of High Point because 
You're early in the third quarter. You can use the middle of the field again now because it's not closing to the end of a half. And your running game, you can really push that, and that can just draw out the defense. But let's see the motivation. Yeah. Let's see the change of Waco Valley. Maybe they'll pressure up on the line more. Well, yeah, and maybe high point goes back to what they did in the first drive of the first quarter, but they're stuffed immediately. The ball was handed off to Mason Merkel, and he's stuffed immediately by that big defensive line led by number 67. Sorry, I'm not quick enough. <laughs> number 67, Joey Van Tassel. I think both defenses saw the offense being spurted out all the yardage in the first half. So we got to, even though it's only 7-6, to six, we got to get on our game. Second down and 10. No yards on the play. And a shift to the right side. And ball is fake but yeah that's going to be illegal that's going to be a legal procedure so what do you think Danny about the fact I think it's because of all of these offensive formations by both teams going in and out in and out trying to trick but do you think they're getting uh too mental with, with because it's Bell I think that's the third penalty for an illegal shift illegal receiver yeah, well, yeah, absolutely. When you have a lot of movement on offense, there's always going to be a couple things that possibly could go wrong, you know, and, and that's that's one of them. And if you're not in sync with the call count or, you know, with with the other motion man, you, most likely it's going to cost you five. And there's the pass to a wide open, but greatly covered. So great job by Elko to, to at least get the pass off. Ball had a good spin to it and just out of the reach of uh, Ty Woods brings down a, a third down. So looks like, uh, you know, two offensive struggles here to start the game with 9-11 remaining and Seven to six, the the Rangers over the Wildcats on a very cloudy early afternoon here. Thanks for joining us. I'm Danny Weiss on the Mars Sussex YouTube Network. Special thanks to KRP Automotive and Growing and Knowing Academy. Great sponsors. Thank you. And the ball is handed off, but he loses his feet to number... 14, Mason Merkel. You know, before the game, Peter, I, I, I spoke to um, I spoke to Coach, and we were talking about, you know, the grass field, and he promised me that they will always stay grass field. And it's a little damp out there. It's safer, I think, grass, but you're going to lose your footing a lot more in this damp weather than you are on artificial turf. So, you know, Coach Leach, that's probably why he walks around barefoot. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that that happens. It it'll trip you up, but it's it's better. It's better than the you know turf. And part. that's uh, coming down. That looks like. Flag on the play. Yeah, that that's going to come back. That's going to come back five yards. I wanted to say another point on the shifting. Um, I think that. It really helped in the first two drives. I think as it's gone along, these offenses, because the defense has adjusted so well on both teams, the offense looks a little rusty. I think the defenses are starting to be on their game and the offenses are reacting and not reacting well and to credit both defenses for both these schools. Right, and to, and to your point, I agree with you 100%. And maybe the drone out there in the upper right-hand corner is giving us... Uh, is giving Walk Hill Valley a good insight on what's going on, if that's theirs. But yes, Walk Hill, but also <laughs> High Point as well defensively. They have started, yes. they, they caused a lot of mistakes on offense we did not see in the first half by the Rangers because they were getting after their quarterback and they were pushing aside you know, the running game and disrupting, I think really it wasn't even so much the quarterbacks on either teams or the running backs. These offensive lines are getting disrupted by very, very talented and well-coached defenses. So on the penalty, declined, and it's first down on the, it looks like it's on the 24-yard line. Um, no, yeah, that's what I thought. I, I, 
I was thinking on the right on the 20. I don't know why they had it on the 25, but yeah. but it broke the game last week against Sussex Tech, and they really haven't been able to stop it for high point. And that's Clarkin's running ability. Yep, so mate, so the ball quickly handed off to you, and he's immediately stopped at the line of scrimmage. You know. And, and it looks it's like in our conversation, we're 100% correct. There was a lot of um, uh, a lot of talking, you know, at halftime to both defenses about how to stop the run, and, and these adjustments are totally working for and them. They pushed a real big guy. That was Massimo Magnarino, and he's lined up right at the center, just busted up and made a great play. So Gabe Oy on the first carry. And it's a great pass attempt. What concentration! You gotta talk about concentration. Clark and to McNeil. How about that patience from both of them to get the first down? What an amazing pass and an amazing catch. Brings it out to the 41. They have been synced all afternoon. And that was a great pass, McNeil. And you know, honestly, McNeil's getting in Master's head a little bit. He's been having to guard him all day long. He's got a size advantage over Masters. That was just a perfect pass. So we got two receivers on the far side, two in the near, and the ball is immediately handed off to Oi, but again, he stopped behind the line of scrimmage. Cody DiCarlo got there for high point. And the runs up the middle aren't going, but it's funny, as we just saw before, they run up the middle and get stuffed. They try the pass, absolutely on the money. So second down and 11, a loss of yard. Ball spotted on the 39-yard line of Wallkill Valley. 7-6 to six as the Rangers lead the Wildcats. 6-39 and counting here in the third quarter. Clarkin in the shotgun. Connor Hobie, the motion. Clarkin looks left. He fights, gets away, and there's going to be a penalty. So Connor Floby, great catch, but that right there is in the vicinity of a hold call. And let's see what the call is from referee Frank Amio. And it is a holding. Well, they made a had to hold, though. Clarkin was rushed. And I think high point, what Coach Campbell really wants out of his guys is, Coach Caldwell, excuse me, wants a, a sack. I think if you sack Clarkin the way he's moving out, he gets so much momentum out of it. And they are rushing up. Their defense looks very confident. But again, they, they're, suscept they're susceptible to that pass. He can air the ball out, and he's, his eyes have been great. Yeah, Danny Clarkin's really found the open man very quickly and very well in this game. We got to give a lot of credit to that defensive line. That's Ryan, Jack, Cody DiCarlo, and Donald Weiss. Great job, three men up front. And of course, Cade Martris at defensive end. And there's the snap, and there's a great ball thrown, and it's going to be incomplete to number 11, Jaden McNeil. So a lot of confidence right now in the passing game, just not getting the completions needed at the right time. And it's third down and 20 ball spotted still on the 30, 31 yard line, 613 remaining here in the third quarter. What one, confidence in Jaden McNeil, not just confidence in the offense, but he's been going him all afternoon. He's got, got that touchdown, got a couple of great plays on that side, but just overthrew him. So three receivers up top, one in the slot, and there's the pass and again thrown, underthrown right there. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel if you're watching the game right now, right on the bottom, and you see our great sponsors to the right and up up to the top, KRP Automotive. Thank you for sponsoring today's game, along with Growing and Knowing Academy. Uh, Morris Sussex Sports is not possible without our great sponsors. Fourth down here, Peter. It looks like a punt situation. So fourth. And Ty Woods is deep. 
<laughs> Didn't work too well there, Zach Clark. And well, that's a questionable play. I mean, I understand what they're trying to do. They believe in the quarterback. Clarkin's got great speed, great feet and strength, but you, you're so much backed in your own hand. It's fourth down, he's trying to run out and scramble. And now, now you give the ball up deep in your own territory. Very, very questionable. Yeah, absolutely, especially when the game is this tight. And, you know, I, the corners here for High Point have stepped it up a little bit. Great coverage and, and great job of keeping the run from going outside. So you're, you're testing, you're testing the, the defense, and it might not have been the best time to, to do that test. And now High Point, as you mentioned, is in great field position, 32 on the 32, and going in from our left to right. Elko under center, and the ball is immediately handed off to Ty Woods. And he's still on his feet, but, and the ball is out, the ball is out, and it's recovered by Wallkill Valley. So High Point comes out, fumbles the ball, Wallkill Valley takes it, you know, it's, it's almost like it's just a quick, it's a quick change of possession. So <laughs> regardless, that fake kind of paid off. Ball is fortuitous. <laughs> He's going up the middle and, you know, he didn't even move the legs, but, you know, one of trying to tackle him down, but the Rangers are also saying, he looks a little shaky, look where he's up, but well, we can just jab for the ball, jab at it, jab at it, jab at it, and then you get the possession, and now Clarkin's back on the field, and the offense, and that's a great gift because you were on your own 28 right. playing defense. Yeah, so let's see if they go to the air. Usually after a turnover, you kind of want to throw off uh, the defense, but yep, and that was correct. And that's a great throw to the swamp man to number three, Anthony Sagroy, senior wide receiver, 5'8, 165 pounds, and he gets enough for the first down. Well, you called that a bullet over the middle of the field, right over to Anthony Sagroy, and now they are at their own 49, just approaching midfield. That was a key pass. It shook the defense off. And now you got the crowd into it. You got the momentum going. 525 and counting. Ball on the 49 of the Rangers. Clark in, in the shotgun. He steps back. And that's a quick pass completed to Hobie. And Hobie gains about four or five yards on the play. Let's see where they spot it. And yeah, it's about four yards. So second and about six ball on the 47 yard line inside high point territory. They've used that play a lot, just that short yardage, that little low flat out to the sideline to Hobie. That's been pushed a couple times. Look out, Danny, for a possible quarterback run. Steps into the pocket, finds a lane, and he gets driven out of bounds at about the 42-yard line. Great job by Zach Clarkin. So Clarkin, again, uses his feet, doesn't see anything. And, you know, he, what I admire about him, and, and first time seeing Wall Kill Valley, but I've seen highlights, is the fact that He's patient with himself. He doesn't find a receiver and will look where his blockers are, uh, whether they're, you know, downfield or, you know, a, specifically to a run, but will know where his blockers are and be confident enough to find a lane and, and go behind them. So I admire that about him, and we've seen this all game. So third down and two. Ball spotted on the 43-yard line. Trips on the far side. Lone receiver here on the near side. And Clarkin hands the ball off yeah, on the eight counter eight. to number 20, Greg Oy. So that's eight enough eight. for a first down, and the drive continues. Yeah, now that's just your offensive momentum. You just got, it's funny because you have to do things that the and way this game has gone, you have to do things down. that you may not like, which is you have to switch it up constantly. And maybe then an illegal shift penalty, you're running the risk of it. 
but you may have to get into that edge because each team, it seems like, what formation can knock off? How can we knock off the defense? So first down and 10 as the drive continues, 430 remaining here in the third quarter. Same formation. Clarkin in shotgun, fades back, and the ball is in and out of the hands of McNeil. That hit him right in the chest, Danny. That was a really powerful short throw. And they've had a lot of chemistry in this game, but it went right off the chest and off the hands. And, you know, sometimes you don't want to drop the ball, but sometimes those quarterbacks, you know, they're kind of, to go back old school, kind of John Elway-like, they can really rip the ball. And Clarkin has shown he can really yeah, rip it in there. He absolutely has a gun. Two receivers on the far side, one here on the near side. That's McNeil. And the ball is handed to Oy. He breaks a tackle, finds the lane, and gets enough for the first down. First and 10 ball spotted on the 30-yard line. I kind of find it very interesting the way that Waco Valley has utilized Oy and his running game. They use him first, but they can also use a second, like open up the pass and then pull out the running back roar. Here we're going to start our first and 10 plays, a designed run to the quarterback, short yardage. Now we'll give it to Oy. Like, it's not your classic, oh, we're going first and 10 right up the middle. It's a very interesting offense they run. First and 10, trips or two and one in the slot. Clarkin looks for, looks for the slot man initially, goes back on his back foot and throws incomplete to Anthony Segroy. So looking, uh, you know, he's got so many targets out there. He's got options. And we have been seeing that all day, at least to three, four receivers. So well, sec yep, second down and 10. Well, yeah, it's, they use the wide outs to kind of free up some of their slot receivers as well as their running backs. That's really been pushed out today. And also, uh, as you were saying earlier, uh, subscribe. Yep, please subscribe to Morris Sussex Sports. In about 30 minutes, we'll have a couple games. Somerville, St. Joseph, Kentucky, Newton, Sussex Tech, Morristown Beard, and King School out in Connecticut. And tomorrow, Hackettstown and North Warren, the makeup for that Thursday game. Timeout. Uh, Bobby Leach didn't like what he saw, so he brings them in. So, second down and 10. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you're on the high point side of things, Danny, I think defensively you're just trying to force some mistakes by an offense that's really clicking for the Rangers. Yeah, and, you know, it's this quarter, again, is a wall kill drive. And, you know, on, on the fumble, look, high point had great field position, right? And that, and that mistake so far really hasn't cost high point, but the drive is taking up a lot of time. And if Wall Kill Valley does get into the end zone, that's going to push High Point into a situation where they need to score quickly. Turnovers mean a lot, you know, in, in, a, in a very close football game. Absolutely. And, you know, that's what they would try to force and just want to uh, let you guys know that it has gone final in Whippany Park. Hanover Park 35, Madison 14. Yeah, Hanover Park's been playing well. Second down and 10. Connor Hosby in the slot. And there's a perfect throw to Anthony Segroy. Connor, uh, pardon me, Clarkin on the money for that play. The coverage on Jaden McNeil has been much tighter and much better for high point. That has freed up Segroy. And Segroy has had a lot of great room to run on his routes. Yep. And he's been going on him all day. Yeah, so we, we went to the replay. And if you saw that, he was looking at Segroy the entire time. There was no second guessing where that ball was going to go. So first down in 10. And it's faked. Handoff. And the, and the pass again is complete to Connor Hobie. And it's first down and goal to go for the Rangers. Great drive for the Rangers as that was a short, low throw. And looking at him again was Clark in the suit to this time going over to Connor Hobie. So first down and 10 ball spotted on the two yard line of high point. 
And Clarkin takes it himself and he gets into the end zone for six points. So on the turnover, as we talked about, Wallkill Valley does capitalize and gets in six points and they did kill a lot of time off the clock. So 13 to six pending the extra point. 238 here in the third quarter. Yeah, that was just the play. The Clark and rush in, and good confidence for Clark and, and for Walkill, and now extending their lead. Yeah, Kubrin gets it right in, right up the middle. So, Walkill Valley, 14, high point six. Danny Weiss, Morris Sussex Sports on the YouTube network. We'll be right back after these messages. WIS gives me the freedom to be entrepreneurial, innovative. I feel supported to bring 100% of myself and my personality to work each and every day. I'm the CEO of WIS Family Office. I have two amazing children. I'm the daughter of French and Italian immigrants. Above all, I'm someone who derives strength and confidence from my ability to connect with others, and I strive to make a difference in their lives. Thanks for joining us again. This is Morris Sussex Sports, where Rangers take a 14-6 lead over High Point. And that ball is going to be downed at the 30-yard line. I'm Danny Weiss alongside color analysis Peter Fivefoot along with Jess Carfella and Julia Gosden at the controls. And up top on the press box at the camera is Gerard James. Exciting football game, you know. And let's go back early to the first quarter. And we talked about it before. High Point just looked like they were going to take command of this game on that first drive. And really, ever since then, it's been all Wallkill Valley. Well, High Point knows how badly they need this game. They don't want to go down 0-2 in a tough division. And really, they, they pushed, but Walkill's pushed harder. So first and 10, and the first play <laughs> hands it off to Mason Merkel. And, man, he's such a tough runner. Puts his shoulder down and fights for every yard. Barrels his way through the defense and picks up about three yards, second down and seven. Yeah, it's been a really difficult game for both teams as the defenses have really started to push their way through, although that big long drive helped. I uh, just wanted to say also two tough games coming up for these teams. Walkill, they'll have Newton next week, mm -hmm. and uh, for high points, going to be West Milford, another divisional game for them. Well, anything can happen. We're still here, or, you know, even though it's late in the third quarter, they're only down by a touchdown and two points. So. Let's see what High Point can do on this drive to, looks like end the third quarter. A tight offensive formation. Quarterback Elko rolls out and he passes the ball complete to Mason Merkel. So great play right there to move the chains. 134 remaining in the third. I think Coach Campbell's got to, uh, Coach Caldwell's got to go to that a lot more. Uh, that short throw where you kind of send the running back out in motion off the sideline. Yeah, that seemed to work. First down and 10, ball uh, midfield. Clock is running here. I honestly think that Dylan Masters is an even better recipient than Merkel than that. Not so much that Merkel can't catch the ball. He's a great pass catcher, but more because Masters is even more elusive and very speedy. He got good legs. Totally agree. Midfield is the football. Slade Muller is receiver on the near side, and the ball is immediately handed off. And let me see who's on the bottom of that pile. It looks like Jaden Ruplow. Ruplow. Pardon me, Jaden Ruplow. And I don't think we've we've called his name today. I think maybe a once or twice, but yeah, he really hasn't played as much. But they're, now they're starting to bring in some of your depth guys. Not so much that, you know, they're injured or anything, but because it really shakes the confidence of a defense yeah. who's used to the starters. And he's a sophomore. 
Elko back to pass, sees a lane. Great block by number 88, Cade Martris, for him to scamper along the sideline and get enough for a first down. So the big man at 6'2", 220 with a critical block there. Well, he was going down there, and as you can hear, uh, the Walkill faithful are not, are not too happy about that. Thought that should have been a hold against High Point, but no, that was some legal good blocks coming off the sideline, and that was a very powerful confidence-inducing rush for John Elko. And that's the end of the third quarter. We are live here from Walkill Valley, the home of the Rangers, where they have a 14-6 lead over visiting High Point. We'll be right back after these messages. Hey, we're talking to you. Don't let the summer sun melt your child's mind. Our customized learning and passion exploring programs are the perfect way to beat the dreaded summer slump. Instead of losing two to three months of learning this summer, we're helping students gain a month of learning by the fall. Our fun and engaging tutors are ready to help. Call to inquire about our programs and special promotions, including small group tutoring for only $45. We'll see you this summer. So we're back live here. Start the fourth quarter. Thanks for joining us this morning. Kickoff was at 11. And if you're just joining us, you could go back and watch us. We are on a YouTube network. Just go to, Mar just in the search bar, Mars Sussex Sports, and pick the game that you want to watch. Go back and watch some of the games from last night and today. What else is there to do on a crummy Saturday afternoon but watch football, right, Peter? Right, college football coming up later, obviously high school. We got a couple games later on the slate as we talked about. And, but, right, I'm sorry, you can catch highlights and sneak peeks Wednesdays at 4 o'clock. We call that the playback preview. So that's on the bottom of your screen right now. And if you want to advertise with us, you can call George Muha, 973-713-5944, or email him at georgiamorrissussexports.com. Thank you to KRP Automotive and Growing and Knowing Academy. Thank you all to all our sponsors that make these broadcasts possible. And you see our key sponsors on the bottom. Uh, right. We were speaking about football going on, and you know we have a couple games in about 20 minutes. But earlier today, we had uh, the other type of football. We had the first game on Morris Sussex Sports of soccer. Girls soccer in Newton, Kittatinny won that two nothing. That's great. And uh, and we have soccer coming up on Tuesday. I'll actually be on the call. Zach Spolin, Hanover Park and Mountain Lakes. So Martris takes it himself. Yeah, and you know, look, I'm going to point that out to the viewers. We're not only football. We we, we do all fall sports. Uh, fall. What comes after fall? Winter, spring, <laughs> yeah. and hockey, uh, basketball, right. wrestling, yeah. Yeah. baseball, yeah. softball, yeah. lacrosse. Right. And, and guess what happens in the summer? We prepare for football. Right. So we're nonstop here at Mars Sussex Sports to the great crews that are out here. So th again, th thanks for joining us. Thanks for the support. And I'm Danny Weiss alongside Peter Fivefoot, Jess Carfello, and Julia Gosden at the controls and up top at the camera is Gerard James. And also all the schools in New Jersey we cover, we, we travel with them. Uh, obviously, as we were saying, about 15 minutes from now, they're going to kick off. More Sussex Sports will have production of uh, Christian Gopin, his first play-by-play -play game in Connecticut, which is, is awesome. We were able to travel there and cover Morristown Beards game against King High School in about uh, 15 minutes there. So we'll be in New York next week, uh, that, that big game. Uh, Pope John and Cardinal Hayes, like, you know, we don't we don't stop. And we're really thankful for these teams to let us cover all these great games across New Jersey high school sports. Did you do your after hours last night? I did. Okay. All right, we're going to talk about that in a second. I'm going to get to that. Second down and seven. Elko under center in a typical Delaware. Take a picture of that. And that was a miracle. Miracle gets the ball and picks up a couple yards. Friday night after the games, Peter Fivefoot and George Muha recap all the games. And there's a link after the games that you just click on. Just go to Mars Sussex Sports. And uh, you could actually get it on Facebook as well. That's where I get it. And Peter and George will give you the rundown of all the games very quickly and sufficient. So 
Great job of that. You're perfect for that job, actually, Peter. <laughs> Appreciate it. That was a later uh, stream we did last night because of, you know, right, all the thunderstorms the yeah. and all that. Right. So third down and about two and a half, three yards. Elko hands the ball off on a wing tee, and he's stuffed. So I know Walker made the stop, but I can't say enough about Merkel for high point. He really is a resilient kid. Uh, when, when you talk about him, uh, you know, a six foot, 200 pound senior that just can run through guys. You know, and I have to uh, point out that number 50, Luke Riley, has picked it up the second half. Great job by the linebacker. Doing a great job to keep this high point, the, the backs getting into the second level. So fourth down, high point is obviously going to go for it. Merkel in the backfield, and the ball is faked as Elko goes outside, and Merkel is wide open, and he's going to get into the end zone. Let's see. For the touchdown. What a great play and a great catch, and High Point is right back in this football game. Yeah, as there is a, as there is a Ranger down, but you could see the pass over to Merkel. Merkel just shuffles through, and nobody going to catch him. Just waltzing right into the end zone. I was saying earlier that he's have had a mammoth game, and now High Point two points away from possibly tying this thing up. Yeah, yeah, a bit big, uh, you know, it's look, you, extra points are really critical, especially in a tight game, and I'll say that a hundred times, you know. So uh, at 9.58 uh, remaining here in the football game, 14 to 12, as close as you can get. And this is pretty much nothing less than what we expected. You know, and Danny, and you talk about, High Point, I think you'd be really excited if you're a fan or an alum of High Point, Booster, whatever, because they you were talking about how they have an experienced football team. They absolutely do, but they also have several good sophomores and freshmen, especially at the offensive line, and a couple of running backs like Sorensen, wide receiver Slade Muller, where... They're going to be here for a couple of years, so there's a lot to look forward if you're a supporter of High Point. So, Connor, no, I don't know if that's eight or three, but regardless. That's number, it's number three. It's, okay. It's Sig Anthony Segroy, yeah. S Segroy, probably a, a, a cramp. Uh, hopefully that's all. He's walking off on his own power, and we're going to go back to live play as soon as he gets to the sideline. You know, Danny, we haven't spoken too much about this, but um, this is one of the reasons why I was really excited for this game, was this is a really fun and a good rivalry between these teams. They have a very eclectic rivalry in all of sports that's gone for a number of years between High Point and Walco Valley. Yeah, and you know, I had a long talk last night with, with Dan Cleary about Walco Hill Valley, who does a lot of their games, and he pretty much... Uh, Gave me the rundown on the tradition. And number 14 gets in for the extra point. Pardon me, that's Merkel. And guess what? We are notched at 14. Well, he was the guy that scored the touchdown. And you can kind of see churning the legs again. It's a very similar play to the one that scored the touchdown here. You've got lined up, everyone's out to the right. And then Merkel just waits for the block. He gets that one block. That's all he needed was one. And he patiently just slips through the seam. And you're absolutely right. With 9.58 to play in regulation time, we are all tied up at 14 apiece. And, you know, it's interesting. When Danny, you were talking about, you talked to Dan Cleary, who's so great, one of the great broadcasters we have on Morris Sussex Sports. Does all the Sussex schools and knows what the tradition at Walco Valley. I, I know about this uh, Walco Valley high point rivalry myself, actually, athletically, not in football, but... Uh, in 2015, Jefferson, Walco Valley, Jefferson, where I went, and Walco Valley and High Point were all vying, all tied for the division lead uh, in cross country. And we all ran at the, at this very field around this area. Uh, and the division championship was one of the runners there. And you could see, you know, the athletes and the coaches for High Point and Walco 
uh, and added bonus Jefferson as well. As much as the rivalry is there, it's not just football; it's all sports, and it's great to see. And I think sometimes it's taken away in the NFL and in college football just the amount of great rivalries there are in high school sports in New Jersey. So Woods kicks it short to the right side, and fielded by Anthony Segroy. And Segroy is hit out of bounds. Yeah, I point loves that, but I just wanted to say, Danny, I, I think I think it's great that you still, even in 2023, get so much of a love of the game when it comes out when it comes out when you're talking about high school sports, especially high school football. It just seems to be that it's not like about money or anything else. It's just this love of the game between great rivalries and great fun and competition. And a big shout out to our counterpart, Joel, who is listening. And he gave me the insight on High Point yesterday. Thanks, Joel. First down in 10. And there's that smash screen again to Segroy. And Clarkin on the money with that play. Well, I think you got to give Segroy a you know, kudos there. That's toughness because he knows that going up the middle, he was going to get flipped. He got flipped and he still caught the ball. So great for, great for Walker Valley for Segroy. And also, they did want to get a shout out to Joel Washington. And he did the game last week against High Point, against Jefferson. So he knows what High Point can bring. Uh, both these teams just, this is, this is good for them to be battling early divisional round because of how much that they're gonna to have to play longer in the year. So second down and about four to go. And in the shotgun, Clarkin pass to Mendoza is incomplete. That's a good look right there. Absolutely up the middle. And you know, that's, to me, always throwing up in the middle is, is dangerous. And you know, I, I'll enlighten you. The, you know, when you pass the ball, three things can happen and two of them aren't good. Can you guess which two aren't good? Interception, incompletion. So two out of the three, especially when you throw it in the middle, you have everybody aiming for the ball. So third down and three remains well, here with 8.58 remaining. Pardon well, me. Well, yeah, Danny, I can't just say, I can't stop talking about the confidence that this kid Clarkin has. He just keeps throwing the ball, throwing the ball, throwing the ball, and he's not shaking even after the incompletion. Clark, and he fakes the handoff, takes the ball up the middle, and is hit by Massimo Magarino immediately, but he actually, not immediately, he does gain some yards, but Margarino was there to meet him to keep him from getting a first down. Fourth down and short, what do you do here? Uh, it's, you know, you don't want to give high point any good field position, but, you know, uh, you also don't want to give up the ball, but I think they're going to go for it. I think that's smart. They you know, go kind yeah. of a quarterback sneak, and, you know, it's a tough kid. Zach Clarkin's a tough kid. You know what I would do is try to draw the defense off, and if it doesn't work, maybe go to a punt. But trips here on the near side. <laughs> and Zach Clarkin does not get the first down. Well, a great job by the defense to string him out and keep him from getting the first down. Well, he didn't have any blockers, so he really had to use his own number, but just that that close. I liked the idea of a quarterback run. I did not like the idea of how it was executed. I think should have been under center, kind of a direct snap, try to use his blockers to push him through, but he just shotgun waited and then took a little bit of time. So now he's rolling out, now you got two big defensive linemen on you and you gotta hope you can get that extra yard and he just couldn't. So now a big chance for high point yep. in Walk Hill territory. As they break the huddle, Elko is under center. And on the counter to Merkel, and he gains only about a yard or so. So second down and nine, 7.55 remaining here in the fourth quarter. Thanks for joining us this afternoon. We're live from Walk Hill Valley, home of the Rangers, as we are not at our 14. Uh, well, they have no issue, High Point, in just letting this clock run and just running it through. 
So if they do score a touchdown, getting that to be as late as possible. Although, if there is an opening, they're going to take it. So second down and nine. There's the motion. Ball is fake to the motion. Elk. And the ball is almost intercepted. So Elko throwing on the run. Danny, that was great coverage by Nick Mendoza. He read that really well and just the one hand tap down. And as you said, almost picked off. And then that would have been a great momentum boost. Remember, as the momentum on the other side of the field marching for high point, then they fumble the ball. That would have been the same kind of situation. But it is dropped, so high point lives to fight another day. So third down and nine. Big play here for, for high point, 719, and you get that shift to trips. Let's see if that fools the defense and really doesn't fool the coverage. And there's a fumble on the play by Elko. And there's, let's see, now it looks like High Point did recover. High Point is on the bottom of the pile there. Great job by the defense, but there's loss of yardage. Yes, it was recovered. It was recovered there by 59, Ryan Jake uh, at that last second. But yeah, great rip and rip out. So defensively, the Rangers understood the assignment, Danny. Yeah, 100% on that. Elko comes from the sideline with the play. Fourth down and uh, somewhere around 12. I would punt this. I mean, you're, I don't, I don't understand. You haven't been able to get it through. I don't understand why you'd go for it here. I agree with you. Get them deep down in their own field position. 100%. Elko in the shotgun. Calls an audible, comes up, and there's a timeout by High Point. I, you know, Peter, I, I, I have to agree with you there. You want to, you know, the odds are against you to get that first down or get closer. You, you want to bring Wallkill Valley as deep into their territory as possible. Let let them earn, let them earn their their yards and and they're gonna kill some time off the clock unless there's a, a quick break for a touchdown. Do you think they were trying to maybe draw them off? You know, that's that's what I think. That's that's what I think, but would it have made it, you know, how, how would much that of a be like fourth and seven? Yeah. It's still not. It's still yeah. not enough. So really what would have been the purpose of of that so maybe it shakes their confidence that's my other thought <laughs> i mean i mean now you're just kind of fishing but right. again you said earlier uh, there was a questionable play but coach knows best so he sure we'll, does we'll see what right. uh we'll see what they do here but yeah i think i think you try to pin them and it's like well they've had a long drive before well would you rather have them long or like a shorter field because you could really pin them inside the 15 inside the 10 you could really do it and that's i think and, what they're going for right. now yeah yeah they're gonna punt it i, I think it's a smart move Merkel is, is, is punting. And <laughs> we're waiting for the snap. I'm not sure what's going on, why the The only thing I could think of is that they want to take yards back and take a five yard penalty. That's what's going to happen. Yep, so delay a game. Take them back five yards. So I look, my thought process, right, on this is that, you know, if he's got the leg, fine. But I, I would have wanted, you want to kick it, you know, as close to out of bounds inside the 10 as possible. So I don't know if five, if five yards is going to make that much of a difference. But again, you know, only coach knows that. And, I'm, and you know, I'm sure Merkel has a, has a great leg. But let's see. Well, that looks to be at about the 15-yard line. That looks to be Clarkin to return. And it ends up being a short punt and, and out of bounds at about the 19-yard line. So... I'm going to say something interesting here, Danny. I actually like that decision. And the reason why is because down at the 15 was Clarkin. You had 
a couple of guys out there, Connor Hobie, Anthony Roy, all ready to block to the outside. Clarkin, because of what we've seen as a quarterback, was probably going to yeah. down down the sideline. You get a good return, and now you're driving down the field. So just take it out of his hands, and we'll look at our defense on this side. So yeah. that's an interesting decision. No, I, 100%. You don't want you don't want a return on that. So it, it was a definitely a good kick to get it where they needed to get it. Clarkin in the shotgun looks right and passes right to Connor Hobie. We've seen that play all day. Him come from the near side. Yeah, I give him some credit because not only has he caught a couple of these passes, they've all been very low, which honestly, in my opinion, the high pass sometimes is easier to catch than the low pass because that low pass, you got to be really down there because if, you know, if it hits just any inch of turf, it's out, it's done. Second and one. And the ball is handed yeah, off Oy. to Oi, and Oi gets enough for the first down. That'll move the chains. So, yeah, well, first now down ten. that opens up a lot. That you opens know, up a lot of options with the wide receiver slanting through. Right. And, you know, it's, it's 525, obviously, plenty of time left on the clock, but you have 70 yards to go. First down and 10. Two receivers on the far side, one in the slot. And there's the shotgun and the ball is passed, but incomplete to number 11, Jaden McNeil. That's the second time, that's right through his chest again. That's another just screamer of a pass that went right over the middle, but the defense are getting some breaks because there are a couple Rangers that have dropped some of these passes. And because of the momentum shift a little bit, I would not put it past Coach Caldwell to send his Wildcats out hunting on a rush to the quarterback. Yeah, and uh, you know, again, th this is the, the, the pass formation that we've seen by Clarkin. And Hobie goes in motion, and Clarkin just either something broke down or he was going to, or that was a design play as a keeper, but he doesn't get much yards. It's third down and nine, 450 remaining here in the football game. So, Danny, you talked to Joel earlier. We were reminiscing going through High Point. Now, what is your thought on High Point this year? I think they'll be good. Last year, more than five, they, they, they were a pretty good team, powered through their division, had some. Very big wins, and uh, you know I got to the playoffs, then just ran into that Caldwell steamroller. But they had a good year. What, what are you thinking this season? I think they should make some. Noise. Yeah, I, I think Elko is is maturing, and he's only a junior, and he's definitely the leader on this team. But you, you have a you have a lot of key players, and the ball is completed to Anthony Segroy, and Segroy does get the first down. So actually, let's speak about Joel. He. He sent me a note that his old color guy coach, Ray Sabia, would call this game the old farmer boy rivalry, right? Ray was an ex-Sussex Tech coach, and he passed away in 2009. So, Joel, thanks for those facts right there. I love these, you know, uh, facts that we get from, from people all over. And how wonderful and how fitting who did Walk Hill Valley play last week, Sussex Tech. It just it just put, works perfectly. And for Walco Valley, I think they're finally finding their legs this season, starting to really get the potential that we know that they have. And that's going to be a legal motion. Oh, wait, hold on a second. Flag on the play. And it looks like it's on the offense. No offsides, defense. Initially, Frank Amio pointed to the offense. Yeah. So first down and five, but you know, big penalties. No need for penalties at this point in the game. Anthony Sagroy, the receiver on the near side. Hobie in motion. Plenty of time here for the quarterback. And it's incomplete to Mendoza. So it brings up a third and five. Clock stops at 332 remaining in the football game. So thanks for joining us this afternoon on the Mars Sussex Sports YouTube Network.
And if you're just joining us, we're not at a 14 high point. Started the game off, almost completed the first quarter with a with a drive that took up the first quarter and scored. It was on seven nothing and just tied the football game on the two point conversion. We're not at a 14. Ball is handed off to Snyder, Snyder the sophomore running back and he gains uh, maybe a yard on the play ball spotted on the 45 third down and five to go right Danny, and, and it's interesting you were noting that because for those coming in later maybe you were watching the hanover park game special teams you were noting earlier was such a big part such a big part because the lead was six nothing. There was a you know extra point missed, and then the two point conversion. Special teams has been huge in this game, and usually in the rivalry games they are huge. Third down and four, big play as McNeil goes in motion, and there's the pass to McNeil, and he gets enough for the first down. Sees a lane, goes right in and gets to the 40 yard line. Ty Woods on the tackle, and that'll move the chains ball inside the 40-yard line as the drive continues, and the clock continues to move at 2.35. He's had a couple of security blanket low throws now. Because of the fact that the rushing game has worked and they've gotten some big plays from the high-point offensive side, maybe the thought for the Rangers are, how much clock can we crunch? First down and 10. Twin receivers on the near side, one on the far side in the shotgun. The snap is pretty low. And here's the pass. Incomplete. Incomplete to Mendoza Nick Mendoza. Yeah, it's a great look right there by Connor. Uh, pardon me, by Zach Clark. And so second down and 10. Clock stops at 2.05. And the crowd here remains as we focus on the <laughs> student body. No one has left in this exciting not at 14-14 football game. Oh, they're loud. Oh, Walk Hill Valley, they're, the Ranger fans, the Rangers fans really can get up. And there's the pass. Oh, and it's incomplete. Thrown behind the receiver. And that'll bring up a third down and 10. Just a little miscommunication on the route. Oh, he was trying to just rip it in there, and that wide out was, that was Connor Hopi who has, he's had some really talented physical catches in this game, Danny. For the Rangers, Connor Hopi. And uh, yeah, their offense, their offense has found ways to manage themselves. So third down and 10. And feels the pressure, breaks out of the pressure. So the initial pressure from number 72, Donald Weiss, flushes him out of bounds, and it's fourth down. Big play here with 152 remaining here in the fourth quarter. So this is really tough, Danny, because you could try to pin them and make them drive with a minute 52, which you said, you know, is ages for NFL, but high school football, that's that, that's not as much time as you'd think. But they've gone for it on fourth down a lot. It looks like that's what they're looking at. I think if you're gonna go for that, I think you're gonna have to roll out Clarkin again. Fourth down and eight, big play right here. So let's see what the play call is. And he's waiting for, looking, <laughs> staring right at Coach Leach. We're not sure what the delay is. Well, we talked about earlier on that weird fourth and 12, uh, and then they eventually punted to draw off. You draw them off here, it's fourth and three. And then, and then you would enter onto about their 32 yard line. So, okay, so here was the miscommunication uh, Coach Coach Leach was watching the back judge, and it looked like he didn't see the count, the countdown for for the delay, but ended up getting the timeout. He called the timeout with probably a half second left. So I th 
I think the penalty is, I think the penalty was waved off. So that's big right there. You know, it, it looked like he was, had great eye to the, <laughs> to the ref. I'm not sure wh where the breakdown was. So, fourth down. What are you doing in this situation, Peter? I, I don't know. I'm, 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 I'm lost. If you go for it on fourth down, you roll the quarterback out. You know, because, I initially yeah. thought pinning him, but the way this high point crowd and this high point team is played defensively, they're starting to rise up. You see the players really getting into it. I think, I, I think they could immediately get the momentum. And high point has looked better on offense. I, you get, you get, yeah. Like pulling for on fourth down. I think now is the only play. Yeah, and you got to roll Clark and out. You got to hope for a long pass up the middle. Right, and you got your three weapons to look at, and the pass is incomplete. Great job. Good pass to Segroy, but a great job defensively. Yeah, that's incredible play defensively. That was, yeah, that was by Dylan, Dylan Masters. Masters. Yes. That got the arm in there to deflect that ball because Segroy was going to catch that. He was going to go down, and it's going to be a big first down. Crown was going to get into it. And now Masters stops the clock with 146 to play in regulation, and now. High Point will have a chance for a game, potential game-winning drive. So let's see what they do here. If they don't get it, we're going to go into overtime. Now note to Morris Sussex viewers, we have only had one overtime game this year. That was a 27-20 win by Union over Bridgewater Raritan last week. And being very conservative, and there's a flag on the play, and that's going to be a hold. And that's coming back 10 yards. So it was a great run by Merkel, but that's going to be negated by the holding penalty. Well, these defenses are starting to really push aside, as we've seen. Man, I think the defense is playing so well, it just changed the game going into the second half. And one of the reasons why it's changed is something we've seen more in the second half than we had in the first half, a lot of holding penalties, Danny. Yeah. I think you give credit to the coaches. I would defensively. <laughs> Absolutely, 100%. And look at some of the assistant coaches that get high point. William Percy, Billy Smith, I mean, they, they worked this defense to be one of the more dominant ones. And I know they lost, but still, they lost last week. They only gave up 18 points to a good team in their division. Like, so first, defensively, they're a really potent team. First down and 20, Merkel takes the carry, and he only picks up a couple. You know, I, I, at this rate, if High Point really doesn't go to the air, we're going to go into overtime. They, I think, should run, but I think I like this for High Point. Kind of an outside, not a sweep, not a lot of high schools utilize a sweep, but like an outside run. If you could pull a block, and you could possibly get Merkel into a big, long, churning run. I, I, and we'll see what this formation ends up being, Danny. Second down and 15. Well, we got less than 40 seconds and change. They, they, they're they not rushing to try to try to win this game. Time on high point, that's the second half they have one left. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of confidence going into overtime. So. And we're gonna have to go over the overtime rules. All right, so. Just a little bit of preface that we get there. I believe it's somewhat like college where you have a possession at your, I think it's either 35 or the 25 yard line. You have four chances to get, you know, first downs obviously and then the touchdown and then it goes back and forth, back and forth. Uh, I believe on that third possession though, uh, there's no ability to kick a field goal if you're still going. Uh, there was, uh, there were three chances in overtime in the Union Bridgewater Raritan game. Uh, Union ran it in to take the lead and then uh, then interception. The kind of funny thing in that game, Danny, was that Union's corner intercepted it and that's the end of the game, fall down. Didn't realize that. Ran for 40 yards, he didn't have to. Right. And they said in the, the telecast, hey, if he fumbles the ball and somehow there's a miracle, they go to a touchdown, we still got a game going on. So the coaches will be instrumental in teaching these players if they do go to overtime here. 
And the ball is handed off to Merkle. And that's going to take a, you know, I, I can't imagine they're going to call a timeout. That's going to take us down to overtime. Third down and 11. Ball spotted on the 36. And we're counting down 15 seconds. They'll probably take a timeout late just to make only one play to win this game. And they may not. No, it's going to take us to end of regulation. So at end of regulation, we're not at F14 in Wallkill Valley, the Rangers and the Wildcats. So we're going to go to overtime. We'll be right back after these messages. That young athletes are at a higher risk for opioid misuse and addiction due to prescription pain relievers after having injuries and surgeries? Don't let injuries lead to addiction. Help your athlete train and play smart. Ask your doctor about non opioid pain management alternatives to keep your athlete in the game. Visit centerforprevention.org to learn more. Athletic Fields of America in Montville, New Jersey has become an industry leader in synthetic turf. Serving the greater New York, New Jersey, and Eastern PA regions, we have delivered hundreds of both synthetic turf and natural grass sports fields for youth and recreational levels all the way up to the highest standards and requirements of the NCAA. Our goal with every project is to provide our customers with exceptional workmanship, extraordinary service, and professional integrity while constructing a superior product that you can enjoy for years to come. Visit athleticfieldsofamerica.com. Hi, I'm Rob Guswaller. As the branch manager of our Persephone location for North Point Bank, I can tell you emphatically that our customers continue to sing our praises. Our community values us as much as we at North Point value our team. Our goal is to always exceed our clients' expectations. If you're just zipping through life and need a helping hand with any of your home buying decisions, please give us a call today. Now, welcome back to overtime here in Walkill Valley. The Rangers and the Wildcats. Color broadcaster Peter Pfeiffer along with play-by-play -play. anyways. And overtime, well, let's go over the rules as they meet at midfield. So I believe, what is it, three? It's, it's you know, you start at the 35-yard line. I, just, I didn't know you are waiting there. Coin well, toss here. Yeah, well, each team will get a possession. Right. Um, it's, is that the 35 or the 25? That's, I, I, I don't remember. It's been a yeah. while since uh, since I did a game that was overtime. But they're going over the rules now. So Now, Clarkin has a great edge in this game. And the reason he has such an edge is because you're getting a mobile quarterback that can roll out in overtime in a short field that gives you such an advantage. Yeah, 100%. But then on high point, the biggest thing is there's no long field, so you – your, and no running clock. That's another thing. The clock is not going to run. It's a stopped clock for the rest of the game. And you're in a shorter field. You don't have to worry about the clock stopping. You don't have to worry about going all the way down the field. You have freedom to run the ball, which is their strength. To kick out and do that. So, you know, what started out <laughs> in the first quarter, we thought this game was going to be over in an hour and a half <laughs> the way it was going. But very enjoyable. It was a start time of 11 o'clock. So if you're just joining us for the morning game, we're now here in the afternoon. And if you missed all the action, that's what makes us great at Mars Sussex Sports. You go back, watch it on the YouTube channel. Just in the search bar, put Mars Sussex Sports in High Point or Walk Hill, wherever you're from. And you can watch the game as many times as you want. Go back to your favorite plays, favorite players. But we're still here, 25, uh, yep, and there you go. The ball's going to be spotted line. on the 25-yard line. And I'm not sure. I, th I think it goes back to the original coin toss, if I'm not mistaken, unless they flipped the coin and we, and we missed it. But I think they did flip the coin. Okay. I think they did flip the coin. Uh, they the start the overtime at the forward end of the field with high point on offense. Yeah, they're lining up defensively. So I don't know, it could be, you could be right actually, because High Point received the kickoff to start the game. So High Point, so again, just to recap on the rules, 
if High Point scores uh, a field goal or a touchdown, obviously they take the lead. If they score a field goal and the Rangers score a touchdown, then Wauquill will win. So the crowd on their feet here for overtime. And the ball is handed off to Merkel. Follows his blocker. He's still on his feet. He's fighting. He doesn't give up. And he's in for the touchdown. So immediately, and I'll tell you, what a block by number 72, Donald, Donald Weiss. Unbelievable. Let's go back to the replay. Well, Weiss Check. comes across. Here you go on the top of the screen as you watch it out high. And a right block there. there by Weiss. Great play and still running. None of the Rangers could tackle. Merkel's had an awesome afternoon, and now an extra point, which again is not automatic. We saw in the first drive where they missed that, and this would make it 21 to 14 in overtime and would force the Rangers to have to score a touchdown to keep this game alive. Jacob Woods, and there's a timeout. Well, they're gonna go for an extra point. Maybe Think about going for two. Uh, that, I mean, going for two, though, would, would not make sense. The only thing that would tell me is that you may not have as much confidence in your kicker. Right, 100%. But it looked like there was some, Yeah, you know what, I think they're going to go for two. And the only reason I'm saying that is they just had two personnel changes. I could be wrong, but we'll see when they break the huddle. It's a big risk that they know they have yep. to have the absolute best play because – just like they did in that first, that second drive for Walker Valley. Then if they miss the, the two-point conversion, then you could have an extra point. But this time, not take the lead, win the game. So first down, well, for the extra point, pardon me, and they're going for the two points. And that's going to cost them, nope, that's a timeout. for Wallkill Valley. I, okay. They didn't like their defensive formation, Danny. That's why that happened. Yeah. So kind of what, you know, it's, it's well, we, we think maybe we, we have some options for a two-point conversion, so we're going to call a timeout. Let's take the kicker off. And then for the Rangers, well, we don't like defensively where we're at, so let's take a timeout and reorient each other. And you know what might honestly happen after that chess match? They bring out the kicker. It's happened before. Well, let's see. I, I haven't seen any personnel changes. So Because now the defense is going to be lined up expecting a two-point conversion. Right. And likely expecting a run because that's what the package was. So let's see what Coach... Okay, he's for the two -point conversion. The has un under his sleeve. And, and the ball is handed off to Merkel, and he gets in. No, he's stuffed. He's stuffed at the line. He almost got there, but just short of the goal line, and now that exact situation. Now it is it is not 21 to 14, it is 20 to 14, meaning if the Rangers come and score, they can have an extra point to win the game. Well, regardless, they Dra are. Drama here in Walkill. It's a crazy game we're glad to have for you on Morris Sussex Sports. Well, would, you know, I, I mean, if, if, yeah, obviously they have to score a touchdown and that extra point would win the game. But if they don't get the, if they score and obviously don't get the extra point, we're going to double. Double overtime. And Double overtime. And that's, yes. and that's fair as well. And this is just a great test. A great test for both teams. And again, as we said, they're, they're going to have tough games next week for for Walkill Newton and for High Point West Milford. Right. Right now they're just concentrating on the on here and how critical it is. Clark and back the pass into the end zone. No, incomplete. Fans wanted interference, Danny. No. But, yeah, that was clean battle. And that's a big win for the confidence yeah. and, of and, Dylan Masters. And, you know, the rule is this, you know, what happens is when there's a pass, as long as both, you know, there's equal opportunity for both. Right. On the offense and the defense. And, 
you know, as long as the defender is turning around and playing the ball, you're never going to see a pass interference. So second down and 10. And don't be surprised if they go to the trips on the far side. Clark can back the pass, and this time it's thrown into the slot, man, who's Jaden McNeil. So McNeil cuts towards. Oh, wow. We got a flag because after the play, Jaron Mattress pushed one of the offensive linemen for the Rangers. That, that has got to be infuriating for Coach Caldwell, the, the, the unsportsmanlike plays, Danny. And that's not a five-yard penalty. It's not a 10-yard penalty. 15 yards, yeah. But not even take away the yardage. Let's say we, we're in this fantasy world where, you know, you didn't lose yardage for unsportsmanlike. It's just it's not good character. You need, your, you need your top guys to be your character guys, and that was, and I understand it's a frustrating, it's a long game. This is, we, this has been, it's, what, oh, it's, it's, it's about almost 125 in the afternoon. We started at 11 o'clock. It's a, it's a long game. I get, I get the frustration, but you can't do that. Clarkin takes it himself. He tries to get to the outside, he gets there, and he's stopped at the one yard line. <laughs> he tried to jump over <laughs> Dylan Masters. What a run getting to the goal line, and now you got a first and goal knocking on the door. The Rangers yeah, in overtime. Good pursuit by Weiss, just not fast enough to get the speedy Clark in. So second down and goal to go. Two receivers on the far side, two here on the near side. Oy in the backfield, and Clark keeps it himself. Great job by the defense. Yeah. So Eli Nozel got there. They're, they're really pushing. They're really, really pushing the envelope here defensively. Now you got some options here. And this is the great thing in overtime. You can really hear the Rangers fans. Yeah, let's go walk -o, let's go walk -o. This is incredible environment here in overtime, Danny. No, oh, 100%. You can't get any more exciting than this. Clark in, in shotgun and passes. I, 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 incomplete. Batted down. I think Donald Weiss, who's had, you talked about it. Donald Weiss has had a great game. I think he got a piece of that. Can we go to the replay? Let's see. I thought it hit their own man. I will just go to the replay real quickly as uh, I think they called a timeout for Walkill. But yeah, there's the throw. Yeah, and it hit the back of number right there, 58. Yeah, 50, it <laughs> might have also had a piece, but it definitely also did hit just the back of the offensive lineman, uh, Adam Zaborny. And now fourth and goal from the two. If you get in, you have a chance to win the game with an extra point, Danny. <laughs> if you're stopped, high point wins, and they their record becomes even 500. How much more exciting can this get as junior Zach Clarkin having a phenomenal game? Let's see what high point can do to stop it. Boy, in the backfield, Clarkin in shotgun. And Clarkin takes it back. Doesn't see. And he's in for the touchdown. We are knotted at 20 here in overtime. Well, the Rangers tie it as going to the pylon and a pylon play. He just had enough. Clarkin has had the heart. There's the setup play, the pump fake, and then the scramble. And Clarkin ties it just like that. And now, potentially, Danny, Joseph Kubrin can win it for the Rangers. There's a snap, and the kick is no good! No good! We're going to double overtime. What a game! This is incredible. We've played over it was two hours and a half now of football there in Walkill Valley, double overtime. And just after he hit the pylon, the kick ready 
And, you know, the extra point missed. He said, oh, the Rangers have a chance to win the game now. Their extra point blocked the first block. And this game has had everything. So this is why you watch more of Sussex sports football. Both of these schools now only one team can win. But it's one of those games where you feel like both should because they have given it their all. I'm not 100% sure of the rule, but I, I, I think the next score wins the game. I, yeah, I'm definitely going to have to check that up as well for you. But for, but for High Point, yeah, they're probably going to go back to their run, and, and they've been they've been going. Uh, you know, Mason Merkel's been crazy. Okay, we'll start the second overtime the way we start the first overtime. Wildcats on offense at the range of 25. Big turn of events here. High point started the game. It was all them in the first quarter, and now it's been a battle back and forth. Elko under center, and the ball is handed off to number 14, Jason Merkel. No, I read it. No, uh, each team still does get a possession. Okay. Each team does still get a possession. It, it does not become, um, what is it, sudden death. It does not go into sudden death. Uh, how, many, how many overtimes? Three? It, well, no, it keeps on going until it's over, but I believe once you get to three uh, field goals, or, or no, extra points or field goals cannot be had. You have to keep going for two because the idea is that the two-point conversions usually are stuffed. So usually if you go by three, then the longest the game will be like quadruple usually. I remember the longest football game I ever saw to go in overtime was uh, Texas A&M and LSU about six years ago into seven overtimes that game. And the quarterback. Well, good stop on that weak side for the Rangers. Getting there was Luke Riley, the senior 5'9", 170 linebacker. And now what, what do you do here if you are the Wildcats? I think, you know, the threat of the pass could really open up something here. In, o in double overtime, Danny. So Martris takes the ball, it, follows his blockers, stays on his feet, and, he will get inside the five yard and he's inside the five yard line for a first and goal. Well, Martris, Jaron Martris, 5'10, 160. And we're going to take a 30-second timeout. We'll be right back after this. If you live in Andover, Blairstown, Byram, Frankfurt, Franklin, Frieden, Freelingheisen, Green, Hampton, Hardwick, Hope, Knowlton, Lafayette, Newton, Sparta, Stillwater, Sussex, and Wantage. Planet Networks is building high-speed fiber in your neighborhood. Visit GetPlanetFiber.com today to learn more. And we're back live here in the second overtime where we're knotted at 2020. Thanks for joining us this afternoon. I'm Danny Weiss, Morris Sussex Sports on the YouTube network. Game kickoff was 11 o'clock, and we're going on three and a half hours. No, two and a half hours. But it's very exciting football here for Saturday afternoon. First and goal, and it's a bad snap. And what a great job by number five, Kellen Brown, the sophomore. Well, Kellen Brown gets the Rangers fans back into it with an incredible pursuit and tackle. The fist pump, you could see his excitement. And yeah, fumbled snap. So now you're second in goal now from the Ranger 19. Well, I mean, you saw that, you know, that, that goal to go play from the 30 earlier in the game. This is big test for high point. 
Slade Muller is the receiver up top. And there's the handoff to Merkel. Merkel stays on his feet and brings up third down. So third down ball spotted on about the nine yard line. So two plays to get it in. Yeah, and you have to because then, then if you don't get it in, well, honestly, I think, I think you might just go for the field goal because the problem is a fourth down, I think if you're not close enough where you think you can just run it in, you may have to kick it because you'd rather have a field goal than no points at all. 100%. Yep. Because then they could go, but as we saw the kicker, like this game, there's so many things, like I don't want the listeners to think we're not boun bouncing around, but there's so much going on in this game. We've, this game has had everything, Danny. It's just had every sort of bounce of the ball, as you can imagine. Well, high point better. Yep, I, I, I saw that. There's a delay a game. I'm not sure why they're taking so much time to to break the huddle. That's got to be, what, the third time that's happened? It's high just, point? Yeah. Just not paying attention. This is good for high point, especially well, get, play having play more play experience. Play this is play. really good for Walk Hill, for a young team this young, and especially for the young players on high point. You know, you're getting your overtime game. I always say, like, we had a lot of, because of the thunderstorms, we had a late games. I think... Like sometimes it's inconvenient, but those late games or the overtime games or delays or all these like craziness, oh, it's inconvenient. I think it's great for a lot of these teams because I think the young players, you learn how, especially if you're going to play college ball, you get or better get used to these tough games, inconvenience. It really helps helps your career and also helps you even even in life, just dealing with things you can't control. So third down and goal. Defense, defense, defense. And there's the pitch. It looks like it's going to be an option. And didn't fool the defense. So on the pitch option to number 22, Eli Nazol, doesn't fool anybody. Senior backup quarterback and defensive back. So there is no way they should be going for it on a fourth and goal from the, the the 15 so or the or, the, or no it's a spot a little after the 10 but still at eight i i you gotta bring the kicker here you gotta go for well, it. he is go. yeah he's yeah. back there kicker's back there jacob wood set the kick and it'll be a, th a 33 yard attempt kick is off no good. And the kick is no good. So Wolk Hill Valley gets another shot, and if they score, this football game is over. Well, he missed it wide right. Just hooking. Just hooking by the uh, that post. And now, yeah, now, now Wolk Hill will have a chance to score and win the game here with any sort of points. So they got a benefit there. I think right now, everything's on your quarterback. He's done everything for you. He scored the big touchdown to save the game for the Rangers. And you can hear their crowd, Danny. Uh, timeout again. High point. And that's, that's it. That's the only one they have left, absolutely. So I know that during the break a little bit, then you were looking at some of the overtime rules we were talking about. This is this is good for for it was good for the players. We talked about conditioning. Good for the players to go through overtime. It's also good for us, Morris Sussex Sports, our second overtime game this season. And that game ended in overtime. Yes. It was a long drive, but it ended in overtime. This is the first game here on Morris Sussex Sports to go to at least double overtime. And if not, it'll go to triple. So we, this is good for, you know, all the broadcasters and all the producers and everybody here at Morris Sussex Sports. Uh, a, a good early game in the early season to learn from. So first down, Clark in, fires the ball, but it's incomplete. Oh. Okay. Oh, no, they're saying he caught it. Jaden McNeil. McNeil. Okay. They 
Second down and five. But he was low on the, the two knees, just able to shovel the ball underneath and kind of bread basket it. And, you know, they've had a lot of great contributors, but Jaden McNeil has just been there time and time again when his quarterbacks needed him. And the ball is handed off to number 20, Gabe Oy, and and he gains a few yards to get it down to third and two. So, short yardage situation here. They have not utilized the direct snap. I could see a quick short throw over the middle. I think that's what they're going. Well, let's a guy see. to watch, I think, is Nick Mendoza. Trips on the far side. Larkin takes the ball to a nice pass and complete. That's going to be enough for the first down as the drive continues to Mendoza. And, yep, Nick Mendoza, I, 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 I can see the way he was running, and that throw right to him was able to catch that. And now you're moving the chains. Ball at around the nine. I believe it looked, it is the nine, yeah, well at the nine yard lines, this will be first and goal it looks like. And. Yep, first down, and they need to get to about the five for a first down. And there's the pass, right over the middle to number 11, Jaden McNeil. What a rifle. From Clarkin. We got a wildcat down but that's a great pass to McNeil. Yeah, let's see the replay there. Here in double overtime, you can see the shotgun snap on just looking, looking his way confidently. What a poise and just rifled it in there. As you can see, Anthony Roy is starting to try to get his hometown crowd into it and they are going to have an opportunity on a first and goal at the four yard line to win this game. Now, all they need is a score of any type. If it's a touchdown or a chip shot field goal in double overtime on, you know, they could score and High Point would lose. But I, I don't think High Point, even going in, I think High Point, if they lose this game, might be one of the best 0-2 teams in New Jersey. I totally like, agree Like, they're with a good, they're a really good team yeah. that had an absolute 100%. chance to beat Jefferson last week. Many great chances to beat Jefferson. And they have had many great chances to beat Walk Hill tonight. And they, they're a good team that is still going to battle in their division. 100%. And thank you again for joining us. And we're on the Mars Sussex Sports YouTube Network. Reserve us for your next game. If you look at the bottom, click the link below. Playback preview, catch highlights and sneak peeks Wednesdays at 4 o'clock on all the full sports. And special thanks to KRP Automotive today and Growing and Knowing Academy for joining us and all our sponsors, which are listed on the bottom right-hand corner. Well, that was Ryan Jake, who is a little shaken up at the Wildcats sideline. So first down and goal to go. And there's the pass, and it's incomplete. Second down. Incomplete, and but almost intercepted, which would have sent us to triple overtime. Dylan Masters was in the end zone, but it just went off his hands. And so he made the right play, but due to the fact that he didn't catch it, Rangers lived to fight another day. I think they're going to go here. They're going to try to get Gabe Y win this game. So let's see. We got trips up top, and there's the snap, and the ball is screened right in, but goes nowhere. Third down and goal to go. That's the first time they've gone for Scroy on a screen. Not the first time they've gone to him, but the first time they've gone to him on a screen, and that's completely swallowed up. Now, I don't. I'm not positive, Danny, but do the Rangers have a timeout here in this double overtime? Can they use that? Because it's if one they don't like the offensive. Yeah, so they could use their timeout if they'd like. High point cannot, but they can if they'd like. Third and goal now. Remember, score a touchdown, it's over. But they could also win it on fourth down on a field goal attempt. Let's go, 
So here we go. There's the snap. Quarterback looks right, steps up into the pocket. And it's incomplete. Fourth down. This will be the last play for them to get it in the end zone. And they're going to go for a field goal. So the field goal could notch a victory right here. That was Mendoza. It went right off his fingertips. He almost had a one-handed catch to win it. But in a walk -ill. they lost by 10 in their first game. They had to come back late in the fourth quarter. They're in double overtime. They're getting their tough ones out of the way here, Danny. Kubrin, the sophomore, set to kick. Last time unsuccessful. And the ball is up! And it is good! Rangers is good. win! Rangers win! Rangers win! In double overtime, Danny! Unbelievable game, unbelievable game. 23 to 20 and reason to celebrate actually on both sides of the field, but Walt Kill Valley comes out with a victory. So thank you for joining us this afternoon. I'm Danny Weiss alongside Peter Fivefoot and the rest of the crew here from Morris Sussex Sports. And join us every day, every day of the week. Come back and watch your games. Have a safe trip home and we'll see you next time. And the quarterback will take it himself. And he gets in for the score. Well, up here in his senior year, he can really push this offense, Danny. So number three to Anthony Segroy is one of the wideouts, and the ball is handed off tackle. And no, he keeps on his feet. Look at that run. What a great job by number this far. So Clarkin is not a quarterback known for the deep threat, but if he wants to go there, that's open. Second down, my, my bad, no loss of down. Trips on the on the far side. And there's the pass, McCracken. Clarkin complete to Segroy. One feels the pressure, gets outside the pocket, throws on the run to Nick Mendoza. And Mendoza gets out of bounds. What? And he is at about the 14 yard line. I can't just stop talking about these wide receivers. They're rousing. As long as the rain holds off. So third down and 11. McNeil, the receiver here on the near side. And we got trips to the right. And there's the pass. And it is caught. What a remarkable caught catch by Jaden McNeil. We can go to the replay. Lee DiCarlo is the center for today. And on the right side is Matt Munger. Quarterback and shotgun. And he will take it himself. So that's. And he breaks it to the right. Breaks it all the way to the sideline. Great run by John Elko. So we're seeing the same formations. Trips on the far side. And the quarterback. Takes it himself. He sees a lane. He gets to the 30, to the 35, down to the 40. And there's a flag. That's going to be. Trips on the far side. Clarkin under center. And the ball is completed to number 11, Jaden McNeil. What a phenomenal. Big guy, that was Massimo Magnarino, and he's lined up right at the center. He just busted up and made a great play. So Gabe Oy on the first carry. And it's a great pass attempt. What concentration? You gotta talk about concentration. Clark to McNeil. How about that patience? Usually after a turnover, you kinda wanna throw off uh, the defense, but and I was correct. And that's a great throw to the slot man, to number three, Anthony Sacroy, senior wide receiver, 5'8", 165 pounds. Really yeah, ripping in there. He absolutely has a gun. Two receivers on the far side, one here. 
on the near side. That's McNeil. And the ball is handed to Oy. He breaks a tackle, finds the lane, and gets enough for the first down. First and 10 ball spotted on the 30. Connor Hosby in the slot. And there's a perfect throw to Anthony Sugroy. Connor, uh, pardon me, Clarkin on the money for that play. And ball spotted on the two yard line of high point. And Clarkin takes it himself and he gets it to the end zone for six points. So on the turnover, as we talked about, Wal Merkel in the backfield, and the ball is faked as Elko goes outside, and Merkel is wide open, and he's going to get into the end zone. Let's see. For the touchdown. What a great play and a great catch. Talked last night with, with Dan Clear about Walk Hill Valley, who does a lot of their games. And he pretty much uh, gave me the rundown on the tradition. And number 14 gets in for the extra point. Part of me, that's Merkel. And guess what? We are notched at 14. Well, hit on this side. So that's an interesting decision. No, 100%. You don't want you don't want a return on that. So it, it was a definitely a good kick to get it where they needed to get it. Clarkin in the shotgun looks right and passes right to Connor Hobey. We've seen that play all day. Usually in the rivalry games, they are They're down in four. Big play as McNeil goes in motion. And there's the pass to McNeil. And he gets enough for the first down. Sees a lane, goes right in and gets to the 40 yard line. Ty Woods on the tackle and that'll so the crowd on their feet here for overtime. And the ball is handed off to Merkel. Follows his blocker. He's still on his feet. He's fighting. He doesn't give up. And he's in for the touchdown. So immediately, and I'll tell you, what a block by number 72. Yeah, let's go walk -o. Let's go walk -o. This is an incredible environment here in overtime, Danny. No, 100%. You can't get any more exciting than this. Clark in, in shotgun and passes I, I, incomplete. Batted down, I think Donald Weiss, who's had, you talked about it. Up. Boy in the backfield, Clarkin in shotgun, and Clarkin takes it back. Doesn't see. And he's in for the touchdown. We are knotted at 20 here in overtime. Well, the range. And Yep, first down, and they need to get to about the five for a first down. And there's the pass right over the middle to number 11, Jaden McNeil. What a rifle from Clark.